Now, I've attempted many different challenges within the Roblox game Surviving Killer Killers in Area 51 over the past year or so on my channel. I've been in the long, treacherous, and agonizing Round 999 with an Extreme Endless Survival Mode all by myself. I've even attempted speedrunning every single category on speedrun.com that you can attempt within this game. And my god, it took a long time. However, personally, by far my favorite challenge that I've successfully beaten within Sackdog has to be the time that I obtained all 40 or so badges within a majorly 24 hours of playtime on a brand new Roblox account, equipped with zero game passes and an urge to jump off a cliff. And spoiler alert to any of you god gamers who have not yet watched that video, seriously it's a good watch, we collected all of the badges in no less than 19 hours and 49 minutes. Yes, I remember the finishing time off by heart. That's... That's sad, actually. So does this mean the challenge was too easy? No, certainly not. If you remember in that video, I got extremely lucky at certain points during the challenge. And I mean luckier than winning the lottery 17 times in a row before the government raided my house in order to figure out that I actually just used math to find the winning numbers all along. Because I'm just using my brain and apparently that's a crime now. Nah, it was all skill. No RNG involved. We simply need to make the challenge even harder. But how? Well, I could attempt to get all of the badges within Sanctic while blindfolded, but if someone were to break into my house whilst I was on round 49 of Endless Survival and attempted to steal my Skylanders figures that do nothing but collect dust in the background of all of my videos, it would be pretty difficult to fight back against them seeing as I'm not Kane from John Wick 4. But then I thought, how about I just do the thing that every money hungry clickbait YouTuber does when they have a video they get slightly higher audience retention than usual, and create the exact same video as before, but add a small little that still makes the new one worth watching. Yeah, we call that milking here on YouTube. What if I just attempted to get all of the badges in 24 hours again, but this time on a different console? But then we run into the question of what console should I play on? Well, I could boot up my Xbox for the first time in several years. I could play on my really laggy phone that is so slow that I measure it in seconds per frame and not frames per second. No, we need something more innovative. Something more... Modern. That's it! We can attempt to obtain all of the Sanctic badges not only in 24 hours again, but this time we will be placed under the watchful eye of Mark Zuckerberg himself, the Facebook CEO and part-time lizard man whose virtual avatar somehow looks more human than his real life self. <laughs> Similarly to the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video, however, we need to set up some ground rules so that we're all on the same page when it comes to the god-awful restrictions that I'm going to set myself during this challenge. Of course, just like last time, I will not actually be obtaining all of these badges in 24 hours straight, as I don't particularly want to be constantly throwing up from motion sickness every three hours whilst I am immersed within the Sackdog world. No, we are once again going to be tracking the time not through a watch, but through the statistics found on the game's main menu screen. God, I love this feature. I swear, if the statistics screen in Sackdog was a real person, I would marry them. We would have seven kids. I mean, what? However, unlike the previous video, I will be allowing myself to use game passes this time. You know, just to make the challenge a bit more fair. I mean, I'm under the constraints of VR headset already. No need to make the challenge extra difficult. But just in case, I have a razor just, just sitting right there. If we ever feel the urge to, you know, shave ourselves bald out of pure anger, then, you, you know, at least we have the option. In terms of friends that I may invite to this challenge to help me with badges that require two people to complete, however, they too must connect up to the cyberspace mainframe via a VR headset to make the challenge fair. That is, unless their entire purpose is to stand around and be a target, like for the bolt bait badge. Then it doesn't really matter. Who friggin' cares? I mean, I don't care, and I've already made the video, so, uh, oops. Finally, I will be allowing myself to bring in an alt account or a friend who is not in VR to complete a very specific task which for whatever reason is just impossible to complete in VR without the help of someone on a different device. Don't worry, you'll see what I mean very soon. But in short, I basically had no choice but to add this rule. However, in traditional all badged in 24 hours video fashion, I mean it's not really traditional, I've only done this one other time, we need to set up a brand new Roblox account so that I can actually receive the badges. Hey, there we go. Area 51 in VR. Somehow it's not taken. And for some some reason, I'm a sunscreen eater. Why am I a sunscreen eater? Why do I have a white face? Of course, this time, however, there is more to do than just setting up a Roblox account and hopping into Sactic straight away. I need to redeem some V-Bucks, some Bobucks, if you will, in order to actually buy all of Sactic's game passes. So I went outside and pretended to be a starving homeless child for a week, begging for enough money until I could buy a Roblox gift card. Then I simply inputted the code into the website to redeem a Mega Minion Tim Backpack. 
what the hell is this? As well as some sweet, sweet Robux, most of which will be sitting on this account being consumed by the void after this video is over because my mistake, I bought too much. I forgot Sactic Game Passes are so cheap. Yeah, guys, that's actually just because I'm so rich. Make sure you guys like and subscribe for your chance to win a PS6. Do people actually believe that? when they like watch a video of someone saying, oh, like and subscribe for your chance to win this $50 billion Rolex or something. Do people actually like and subscribe? I mean, I'm sure kids do, but like actual adults, do, do, do they actually like and subscribe when they see that? I, I really want to know. In a great fit of shame because we have so much cash, we decide that we could probably use this leftover Robux to change our avatar so that we can actually earn some respect from others and also to show everyone else in the server who is on the VR headset here and who is actually just making their gameplay experience physically worse for themselves. Unfortunately, my VR headset did not like this idea very much and said, eh, I don't feel like working at the moment. So I was forced to play catalog avatar creator normally like a peasant. No, this does not break the challenge rules. We technically aren't in Sactic yet. I found a pretty good VR headset accessory hat that looks similar to the one I borrowed for this video. However, one strand of my avatar's hair was unfortunately clipping through the front, which I'm gonna be honest, bothered me a lot. Thanks OCD, very cool. Listen, okay, I either chose that headset accessory or this one, which made me look like a furry. And boy howdy do I not want to be targeted in every single Juggernaut server I join in the future. Future. So, it was kind of obvious which one I chose. And with this totally necessary and needed change to my Roblox avatar now set up, we can finally actually begin with getting the badges and starting this challenge. Yeah, we're already on page three of this script. It's, uh... It, it's not looking good. Then after I cleaned out some space in my room for the first time since the year 2018 so that I can actually move without tripping up and dying in real life whilst attempting this challenge, I finally got around to immersing myself into the thing that every 80 year old fossil tech investor is so interested in nowadays, the metaverse, AKA Sactic VR. This is so trippy. This is so weird. It's saying A to select, but A does nothing. A's useless. I'm literally mashing A right now and it doesn't work. Oh yeah. That's right, I forgot to mention that Sactic may or may not have proper VR support. Because, let's be honest, who the hell would play the sort of game in VR anyways, besides those who partake in awful challenges such as these? As it also seems that the typical main menu cutscene isn't playing correctly, and we are just stuck here in this one spot, forced to look around the desolate void known as the... The... Large Corridor? This area actually has a name? Wow, I've never heard anyone refer to it as the Large Corridor. Bro is horizontally challenged. Bro put the planet in Planet Fitness. Bro Bro has a part-time job being a beach ball. Bro probably jokes that will likely get me cancelled in seven years aside, I finally figured out that the game was in fact lying, and that you don't actually use A to select the different options in the main menu screen, but rather you have to manually aim with this blue laser thingy connected to the right controller, and then you can use the trigger button to select your desired option. W but why didn't you just tell me that in-game? Oh right, yeah, this game doesn't officially support VR. Well, there's your proof. Uh, guys, I have a confession, so you know I've existed on the space rock for about 18 years at this point. Uh, guess how many times I've played on a VR headset? Once. Yeah, yeah, once. And it was for like 10 minutes when a friend came around my house. That's my only experience with VR up to this point. Just want to get that out of the way now. And similarly to the average anime protagonist with nothing at all on the line to lose armed with the power of friendship, I began what I thought would be the most straightforward game mode for this challenge. Normal classic mode. As the countdown for the 24 miserable hours began. Whoa, that's weird. Whoa, 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 whoa. Of course, before attempting to get any badges, we needed to attend to a very needed and necessary task that would be the bane of the entire video if we didn't learn and master it immediately. The controls. They are atrocious. Thankfully, I figured out how to change my camera into first person rather quickly by smashing every button on my two controllers, as we are going to be in first person for basically the entire playthrough to get the authentic, true, and downright horrible VR experience, which can be described as feeling like you're going to throw up every two seconds. However, being in first person does come with more issues, namely the fact that items and weapons are not anchored properly to the camera like they are on PC, mobile, and basically every other console. Nope. 
Sometimes when you turn your head, yes, in real life, I have to turn my head in real life, similarly to those ads I find when I'm just trying to look for an article on the Sanctip Wiki that are titled something along the lines of HOT WOMAN IN YOUR AREA! Click here to learn more! The weapon will just be directly blocking your line of sight and you just can't see anything at all. The only real way to fix this, at least in my experience, is by going in and out of first person again and as you can see it looks pretty much how it would on PC. But just understand this was very annoying. I wish the weapons and arms would just snap to the camera, but no! No fun for us I suppose. Sorry but the handicaps for VR only get worse from here. Now the other controls weren't that hard to get used to, I mean the VR controllers are literally just an Xbox controller split into two pieces, at least according to Sactic apparently. You know, it's friggin' A to jump, just like on the Xbox controller. You know, this joystick to move around, just like on the Xbox controller. I think these triggers, whatever you call them, is to switch between weapons. It's actually been a bit since I played in VR and recording this, like, friggin' three months later. But, you know, the only thing that's really missing from the VR controllers that's also on the Xbox controller is the D-pad. Which, you know, shouldn't be that big of an issue, right? I mean, it's just the D-pad. Right? Once I had more or less figured out the controls to this piece of junk, however, don't worry, it only took me around two minutes, it was time to obtain my first badge, the Bored Soldier, in which all you have to do is talk to, well, the Bored Soldier. However, in doing this, I realized yet another issue with playing Roblox in VR that was going to make this challenge more frustrating than drinking two whole cups of orange juice after brushing your teeth for three minutes straight. My job is boring. Did I get the badge? Did I get it? Did I get the badge? I don't know. It, there was no pop-up. And no, you didn't miss. It. Whenever you collect a badge in Roblox, there's usually like a pop-up that appears in like the, I don't know, big friggin' bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Yeah, that's just not a thing in VR. It, it just isn't. Uh, no, no idea why. There's just no pop-up when you collect a badge. Don't get my words mixed up. I still obtained the badge. Like, it's in my inventory. You can go and check on the Air 51 in VR account if you want extra proof. The issue just so happens to be that when I obtain a badge in the future, there won't be a pop-up in the bottom right hand of the screen like there is on every other console. Why does this only happen in VR? No idea. Thankfully, though, with the power of editing, I can make my own badge pop-up. So I suppose that problem is solved. At least for you guys. I'm gonna have to deal with this, sorry. And that wasn't the only issue that being in VR specifically brought to this challenge. Remember how we bought all of the game passes at the start of the video, hmm? Well, guess what? Since I, for whatever reason, can't change the vertical direction of my arms when I tilt my head up and down, the hook shot is basically useless as you can only grapple forward with it. Which means, yes, that's right, I have to walk like a game passless peasant. Oh, good heavens. Before we embarrass ourselves any further, we regrettably jump down to Air 51 itself and come face to face with our first killer. Hello. <gasps> ah! It's Cam, Cam Zombie. Ah, uh, that's not shoot. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, shoot. Kill. Did I get it? Hey, I got one. I, I killed him. Yeah! Yeah, if it takes me that long to kill a single killer again, this is going to be a very long video, isn't it? I don't know, maybe some people actually do like listening to me yap for a whole hour. I should rename my channel to Ash Yap. No more precious time to waste, however, it's our duty to begin slowly working on the Air 51 personnel badge, which is basically the hardest achievement that we need to conquer in this mode. And once that's completed, we can tend to the other 5,000 things on our to-do list. While trying to figure out how in the balls I'm supposed to access my inventory in VR, I remember that the Way Out badge exists and decide to go for it now so that I don't have to come back for it later. This, this badge alone, shows how awkward moving around in VR truly is, as we fail what is quite possibly the easiest badge in the entire game, behind maybe the Bored Soldier exotic gameplay in 15 minutes, that is. TWICE! YES! YES! Yeah, we did it! Way out! I look forward to attempting the Kill House parkour later on in this challenge. Anyway, now that we were done with that little chore, I got back to working on the various other badges that we need to obtain in this mode. My luck stat must have been through the roof at this moment, because I came across the alien code almost immediately after exiting the way out. This is our chance to get the ultimate secret badge for finding good old Alan. Yes, that's his name now. Even though my luck seemed to be on a little bit of a streak here, my skill certainly wasn't, as it took me no joke, 
five attempts to input the alien code. Look at this. Look at what I have to do. I have to manually aim my controller pointer at the individual buttons to type in every single digit of the code. I swear to God, every single movement, button press, and action that I would usually never give a second thought about is an entire goddamn trial whilst in VR. You see why I bought Game Passes? Do you see now? I mean, it's not like that's gonna matter much anyway. As you've seen, I can't even use the hookshot. What's next? Is my entire inventory going to become inaccessible now? Yeah! Alien! Yes! That took, what, five attempts? What did not take five attempts, however, was obtaining the assailant badge for killing ten killers. Finally, some progress. This motivation boost is much needed during this time, as we continue to go around the area and collect the other items that we need to beat the Air 51 personnel checklist. I will take out my rage on these two VR controllers if I somehow mess this one up and have to do everything all over again. Mark my words, set them in stone, write them on sand, advertise them on the Times Square, Dare I say, post them on an Instagram reel. <sighs> Instagram reels, my worst fear behind the strangle man. And after making my way up the radioactive area ladder, getting camped by zombie and momentarily panicking because I have no idea how to conveniently swap out my weapons in VR yet, we obtain the good old atomic bomb badge and skip past the giant zombie. But Ash, I hear you cry. Shouldn't you kill the giant zombie to get the badge? Well, as you just saw, I almost got camped by zombie and lost the whole run there. And to be honest, I, if, I can't defeat, if I can't defeat a regular zombie by friggin' standing still and shooting, then I don't know how much luck I'm gonna have against Giant Zombie. So, you know, it might just be the easiest boss fight ever, but until I get actually used to the VR controls, I'm gonna come back to him later. It was also at this point within the challenge that we came across yet another piece of evidence that Sactic was not at all built for this console. And this issue is by far the worst of them all. Oh god, um, can I not open this? What? How do I open this door? <gasps> Oh, I can't open the door. I literally cannot open the door. That's right. Due to our camera being locked behind the constraints of VR, we couldn't look down and open this one button under the desk. As behind this locked door lies the ammo box, which we actually need to complete the Air 51 personnel checklist. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, Ash, can't you just duck down or get on all fours like a peasant? Then you'll be able to see what's under the desk and push the button. And I actually did that. But no, I still couldn't open the door for some reason. This is it. This is the true final boss of Sactic VR. While I scratched my chin, wondering how in God's name we're even going to progress given the situation that we're currently in, I went around collecting a few more items that I needed for the checklist to pass the time. Short intermission, got the badge for playing for 15 minutes. There's also no way that we can use the hookshot in order to enter the vent that leads up to the room either. As you may remember from earlier, the hookshot just can't aim upward in VR. Do we literally just have to sit there and pray? Pray to God that some skibbity toilet iPad brain rotted kid who isn't in VR, comes along and happily opens the door for us? Is that truly our only option? Short intermission, got the execution room badge. Well, at first I tried putting the killers of classic mode that can be killed by simply coughing on them to good use by trying to leave one of them near the vent with the idea that we would jump on top of the killer's head and climb into the ammo box room that way. Why are you going that way, you absolute dingus? Come back! Come back! As you can clearly tell, the killers were being quite cooperative around this time. I swear to God, it's in the law somewhere that the killers drunk loads of stupid juice and, you know, that's why they're super dumb in classic mode and they all die in one hit. I mean, how the hell did the soldiers even lose the base to the killers? Like, in the law. Makes no sense to me. I kept trying, though. However, after I was almost clapped by Jeff the Killer of all people and not even getting close to being able to make the jump, I figured that we were going to have to do this the manly way. By sitting and waiting patiently for someone else to open the door for us. Yep. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Mate, please, can you help me open this door? Please. Can, can you help me? I can't. Can you, can you open it? Can you open it? I can't. <gasps> Thank you! Oh, you're a lifesaver, Alex the Bunny! Oh, you're an actual lifesaver. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. You have no idea. Oh. God only knows how we're going to beat the locksmith badge by ourselves when we can't even open one of the first doors available in VR, but we're not worried about that right now. As like most young people, we only plan for the short term. It's only today that matters. And today, we still have an Area 51 personnel checklist that needs to be completed. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you know like the UI button that you have to press that reveals the personnel 
detailed checklist for you and shows all of the things that you have left to do. Well, I don't know what the guys over at Roblox Corporation were smoking that day when they designed this game to be quote-unquote virtual reality friendly, but for some reason you just can't open the checklist in VR to see what you have left to do. As you can see in this clip, I'm smashing every button on my controller while I have the UI selected and it's just not opening. Hooray! Instead of using a very convenient game mechanic placed in by Hummer Mafia 1 himself, we instead have to memorize all of the things we have left on the Air 51 personnel checklist in order to actually beat it. Well, it's a good thing I speed ran this thing once for a previous challenge video, eh? Not only that, but we've got even more bad news. While I was trying to obtain the Desert Eagle over here for the checklist, my entire game froze. Don't worry, I wasn't booted from Sactic or anything. The headset just told me it was on low battery. You can't see it in the recording. It only showed up on my headset screen. Just trust me, okay? This meant that I only had about five minutes left to collect the last item on the Air 51 personnel checklist before my headset completely dies, which means that we will have to go around and attempt the badge all over again from the very beginning when I next boot up the console. Meaning it's now a race against time. I mean, it already was a race against time, so whatever. Luckily for me, the last item I had left on my checklist was to walk through one of the various quote-unquote secret entrances found around the area. And right before the battery ran out... Is that it? Yes! Yes! Yeah! And I wasn't lying either, as immediately after this my headset ran out of charge and later the entire game closed. Yes, that is my actual home screen, don't judge me, okay? Yeah, that? That got way too close. I'm pretty sure it was on like 30% battery when I booted up Sactic or something. I don't know, it took me like two hours to even get onto the game. Like I said, it's my first time using one of these things. After my headset filled its juice box up to the max, we jumped into classic mode yet again, as there are still a few more badges that we had left to obtain here. Before I tended to any of that nonsense, however, I needed to find the button that accesses my inventory, as all of the weapons that came from buying the VIP game pass were clogging up my hotbar, and I actually wanted to get to my energy drink to heal at a moment's notice if needed. I mean, it is classic mode after all, but still, I would like to have it. And after looking through all of the controls in both Sactics and Roblox's settings, I finally figured out that the way you access your inventory in this game is that you just can't. You just can't access the inventory. What? No, I am not kidding. You simply cannot access your inventory in VR. Because of course there's no D-pad on the VR controllers while there is on the Xbox controller. And like I said, Roblox treats the VR controllers like an Xbox controller split in half. How much money does Roblox make per year? Three billion doubloons? And you're telling me they couldn't access they, they couldn't add like a, another way to access your inventory in VR? Hmm. And I know what some of you mobile players are thinking out there. Well, Ash, can you just aim your controller laser pointer thingy at the inventory button in Sactic and open it that way? Yeah, that doesn't work either. Clicking that icon does nothing. For some reason, I, again, no clue why. Oh, and you can't rearrange your hotbar either. What the game randomly assigns you is what you get. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Whatever. Who needs the inventory anyway? We're just gonna have to beat the giant zombie without the energy drink. We're strong. We have the ray gun in our hotbar. We've never died trying to get the way out badge. We can do it! And I immediately switched to the wrong gun. Okay, well, let's fight for it. Oh, no, nope, wrong gun. Minor hiccup aside, we did actually first try this badge. I don't know what I was so afraid of. Although I would have liked to heal myself afterward and immediately went for another badge, but we all know why I can't, so I'm moving on. However, it was after I found the code for the Cleaner 2 badge that something happened. Something that was going to be the bane of this entire playthrough moving forward. Something that was worse than the clunky moving mechanics. Something that was worse than me not being able to simply push buttons under desks. Something that was worse than me not having access to my inventory. The input delay. And by extension lag, I guess, which caused me to fall into the fan here. No, I did not do that on purpose. Now I don't want this entire video to just be me bashing on Roblox VR constantly, even though that's kind of what I've been doing up to this point, but just remember, just remember this one thing that happened to me during classic mode, because it it gets far worse later on in the challenge. Spoiler alert. After I reached 30 kills in normal classic mode though, I realized, hey, I'm wasting my precious time here, and quickly moved over to hard classic to collect the final couple of badges in this mode. For those of you who may be new to collecting Sanctic badges, I did this not to make the challenge even harder, making me snap at the slightest thing that doesn't go my way, but because I actually need to play both hard and extreme classic mode separately to work on the exotic gameplay badge, which requires you to give Hummer Mafia 1 your 
premium payouts by spending at least 20 minutes of your dwindling existence in each of the different game modes. You are huge. You are actually huge. Look how big this guy is. Maybe I'm just short. Maybe it's because I'm like 5 foot 7. Oh God! It didn't take too long, but I got the Assaulter badge for killing 50 killers rather quickly. You might laugh at me for using the Pack-A-Punch Ray Gun for this, but turning in VR sucks. And who's gonna stop me? Okay, do you guys remember when Helpful Killers was actually a difficult badge? Yeah, me too. Even without the hookshot, however, because I can't friggin' use it due to VR sucking, it only took two attempts. Getting a badge the normal cool method is much appreciated during this challenge. Signs and symptoms of depression, persistent feelings of sadness, loss of interest in activity, Activities, trouble sleeping or oversleeping, having to incorporate 36 billion million new steps to completing a single task when all you want is a stupid sacked badge. It only takes me another four minutes of searching around the sewer to find the cleaner 2 code because if you remember I had to serve hot to play hard classic mode. Thankfully though, even in VR, obtaining this badge is still easier than completing Doors Floor 2. Guys, the game is not that hard. Literally just get better. Just admit it, you have a skill issue. No pause button, don't even need one. Boss or enemy does too much damage, just don't take any damage. It is that easy. How did we get to this point? As gamers, saying that a game is like too hard or too difficult? Like, I have never done that. I digress. Time to hop into extremely boring classic mode where we do not in fact go around blasting killers in the base, or even attempt to get any more badges since we actually have them all in these three modes. Good for us. We simply wander around the surface and use math to figure out what type of spawn the mysterious entity has for this account, so that we can be prepared for his arrival later whilst we're rotting away going for 50 rounds or something. Unfortunately, as you can clearly tell, and not because I have a skill issue, trying to do any sort of parkour in VR is near impossible, so I wasn't able to check this spawn right here. For those of you who don't know, which I mean why would you since there's literally nobody playing this game who still knows how to get this badge guaranteed every single time, the mysterious entity also known as Shadow Homer has one of three spawns on the surface which is different for each Roblox account, and you can usually tell which spawn you have by bricks that appear around the map, helping you get up to certain locations and in turn getting you to Shadow Home. For example, one of the spawns that the mysterious entity has is on top of one of the main hangars, which is kind of annoying to get to, but it's not too bad. He can also spawn in the middle of the desert, which is actually the spawn I got in my previous video and by far the best out of the three, as all you have to do is just kind of what, walk across the desert. And for those of you who have ultra bad luck, and I mean luck so bad that you're one off of all of the winning lottery numbers 72 times in a row, he can also spawn on top of the hangar near these completely useless jets. Which, my god, is really annoying to get up to because if you don't have game passes or you just can't use them, you gotta walk across this extremely thin barbed wire which to even get to in the first place you have to jump on top of this tower thing and make sure you don't fall off and then once you've done all of that perfectly you still have to make these two pretty precise back and forth jumps on these bricks which blend into the hangar itself making them difficult to see and then finally after you've done all of that, you can then get the mysterious entity. <sighs> Yeah, I do not like this spawn, and I was very thankful not to get it during my last playthrough. Now guess what spawn I got on this playthrough? That's right, I got the desert spawn again! <laughs> In my dreams. Oh yeah, okay, well, we have the airship spawn. That is a shame. That, that actually sucks. I really wish I had desert spawn, but we have airship spawn. Now that we have found our mysterious entity spawn, which makes me want to quite literally cut my own lifespan in half if it meant swapping it out for the desert spawn, a new question arose. And this question is very simple. How in the balls are we supposed to get this badge in VR? I can't even stay on this tightrope for more than three seconds without falling off, let alone the fact that I can't even land on the fence half of the time. Even if I go into third person and walk slowly, I still fall off because you can't walk straight in VR. I walk gay instead. Listen, okay, I like men. I'm allowed to make that joke, okay, YouTube? Comments that will get me thrown into the zesty bin aside, we try not to worry about getting the mysterious entity at the moment. And instead, we return to the main menu screen to go for a different badge while we wait for that guy to spawn a little bit later. Of course, like the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video, we'll be routinely going back to Extreme Classic mode to check for the mysterious entity's presence. Although I'm not even sure how we're going to get the mysterious entity badge in VR because he's in like 
the most ludicrous spot ever, but again, that's a problem that we're going to tackle in our mid-50s. No time to worry about it now. And hey, check it out, we just passed the first hour of this challenge. And last time I checked, I haven't thrown up due to motion sickness just yet. That's a good sign. No time to worry about my mental health, however, as I'm a YouTuber. And as a YouTuber, my life is nothing but a grind, and this next game mode is going to prove that, as Endless Survival has an absolute mountain load of badges to obtain. The first of these is actually a reference to a certain pandemic that happened only four years ago, locked down, where all you need to do is survive five measly rounds without opening a single door. But why? Why am I doing all of the Endless Survival badges now instead of later? Well, it's very simple. Endless Survival is a great way to improve your aim. And as you may or may not be aware by now, aiming with weapons in VR is actually pretty difficult. Plus, the mode is like really, really easy. Most of the badges aren't difficult whatsoever. They just take a long time to obtain. Again, like I said, since my life is nothing but a grind, this feels like a normal day to me. Maybe I should get a therapist. I don't think this behavior is normal. Listen, okay, this is between you and me. The only reason why I'm doing Endless Survival before Kill House is because I really do not want to have to do the Kill House parkour. Yep, seeing what I have to do to get the Mysterious Entity badges traumatized me. We will not do parkour for as long as we can help it. Since I had the genius idea of giving myself game passes because I knew this challenge was going to be hell on earth from the start, lockdown was very easy to obtain since I had the MP5K in my back pocket carrying me. It's only going to be downhill from here. Speaking of, the next badge on our list is Powerless, which, surprise, accurately reflects how I feel currently. However, that wasn't the only badge I wanted to get during this game session, as if we happened to get a nuke drop from one of these pesky killers on these early rounds and killed a single killer with it, we could also get the Tiny Destruction badge. Do you want to know what I got instead? A crossbow! A crossbow, first time from the mystery box when we don't even need it. That's a blast from the past. I sure do hope I don't have to grind a whole hour and a half away to get this thing to show up again when I go for the Vault Bait badge later on in this playthrough, as I think RNG has already screwed me enough in this challenge so far. Nah, you guys don't believe me. Just like you probably don't believe the fact that a little pigeon came to my window the other day and spoke out my full IP address to me in perfect English before immediately flying head first into an oncoming truck and being turned into pavement pizza. No. I'm not joking. That actually happened to me the other day. I I'm not going crazy, guys. Of course, I was not lucky enough to get a nuke power up on this first play session. However, what I did figure out is that I didn't need to look around in real life to look around in Roblox. You know, like with the VR headset. No, you can just use the right joystick. Yeah, it took me a whole hour and a half to figure that out. Trust me, if you're going to play any sort of Roblox game in VR, which I strongly discourage anyone from doing so, you'll want to use the joystick to move around, as then the weapons won't be blocking half of your view like they do when you move around physically. There is one minuscule problem with using the joystick, however, and that is the fact that turning this way is slow as all hell, as I almost got turned into a pile of flesh by Reject Wolverine over here because of it. However, apart from that isolated incident, we were never at too much risk of dying, and we obtain the powerless badge after sliding down a sewer. If you're new to Sectic and you're wondering why I had to die here, it's because, for whatever reason, most of the endless survival badges require exactly that. You have to die in order to obtain them. Yeah, as soon as I hit round 15, I don't get the badge. I have to die after I get to round 15 without turning on the power in order to receive it. Yeah, I know, it's really annoying. A great sense of deja vu overcomes me once again as I am sent back to round 1 to begin the long track to obtain the 50 rounds badge. Since this is going to take about 3 hours minimum, I'm also going to try and get some other badges along the way, such as It's a Trap, The Curse, Locksmith, and Tiny Destruction within this play session to save some time that will probably be better spent grinding for Juggernaut badges later on in this playthrough. Speaking of the Tiny Destruction badge, actually, it wasn't that long into this play session where we had our first chance to obtain it. You uh, don't know if I got it. Oh, no, I, I didn't get it. Ah, uh, why? I hate this friggin' badge. Yeah, notice that dead Sonic body down the hall? Yep, I happened to kill two killers instead of one, meaning that I didn't get the badge. But you know what? We aren't mad. We certainly do not want to take a bite out of our VR headset because of that, as this is a very RNG-dependent badge. We're bound to get it eventually if we keep gambling. Remember the old saying? 99.99% of gambling addicts quit right before they win big. Are we a part of 
of that 99.99%? Of course not. We're different from the general population. We have 1 million TikTok followers. It doesn't matter if we can't crack more than 58 views per video. We're famous. We're above the law and everyone should kneel before us. With this in mind, we get our 16th Lamborghini and dream about recklessly speeding down the highway at 120 miles per hour above the speed limit because we think we're more important than everyone else, almost running over several families of five who get in our way. However, this plan quickly comes to a screeching halt. Not because we got pulled over and arrested for some reason that I can't explain, but because while attempting to get the quick revive perk, I remembered that we still can't press this button under the desk in VR, even on endless survival mode. I honestly don't know why I thought the outcome would be any different from classic mode, but as it turns out, the quick revive was the least of our worries during this play session. Wait, we can't beat Locksmith now. Because we need to open this door. Oh, frick. Yeah, that's right. Because we're unable to open this door in VR, Locksmith, the endless survival badge where you have to open every door within the mode within a single play session, is technically impossible for us to obtain. Meaning that the challenge is over. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye. No. When there's a will, there's a way. And there has to be someone watching this video with the name Will. Shout out to my Williams out there. Except if your surname is Afton. Then I don't like you. Anyway, the fact of the matter was that I desperately really needed to figure out how to open this door in VR. So I hopped over to Killer Mode, a mode I needed to play anyway to work on the exotic gameplay badge for later, and tried everything that I possibly could to break open the seal of Orichalcos over here. I stood at different positions away from the button, I tried physically ducking down to get a better angle of it, even though that didn't work last time anyway. I even tried resetting my character to see if that would allow me to click the button from under the desk. Nothing worked. However, much like most internet dramas when somebody is being exposed for things they said four years ago, the discovery somehow got even worse when I had the opportunity of actually playing as a killer. Press X to attack with your arm. Well, that's just horribly inefficient. So I have to let go. Are you kidding me? I have to let go of moving to attack with, with to use my secondary attack? What's wrong with just use? I'm changing that. What is this control scheme? I can't even change my controls. So I have to stop moving to use, cause, cause the way that it, let me show you. There's my X button. This is to move. I I don't know what to tell you, man. Now, obviously, I have to reiterate that this is not Humble Mafia 1 or any of the developers' fault. You know, Sanctic is just unoptimized for VR. I mean, let's just go through a list of all of the stuff that we figured out so far. Uh, weapon movements all messed up if you turn around in real life. You can't access your inventory. Buttons under desks don't work because you can't look under desks. And now most of the killer abilities are basically useless. I look forward to playing Juggernaut mode. Yet, even with all of these totally necessary and needed handicaps to slow game progression down to a fraction of its speed, there was in fact a teeny tiny light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, there we go. Oh, get wrecked. Oh, get owned. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this man. Get him. Oh, that's kill mode for you. And he's lagging. What? What is happening? What is happening? You're right, Sir Dem Irity. Yeah, I think we're getting crushed. Wait! <gasps> ah! Ah! I figured it out! Wait! No! For a split second! I'm able to. What is this power? Sir Demirity, you've done it! You've enabled me to. And then my game crashes! Yeah, that's right. You technically can press the buttons under the desk in VR if you play as a short killer like Alien over here. I mean, it's not like that's gonna help me in endless survival since I can't play as a killer in that mode. Just thought I'd mention it as this is indeed a groundbreaking discovery. However, even if I couldn't get the quick revive perk or the locksmith badge during this play session, I at least wanted to get all of the other endless survival badges that I can complete right now out of the way. The first of these was the It's a Trap badge, which requires you to kill at least one killer using each of the five different traps in the game. And I did that, but I didn't get the badge for some reason. No, I'm not kidding. I made no mistakes. I'll put the clips of me killing at least one killer with all of the traps on screen now. I had all of the requirements for getting the badge, but I just didn't get it. I'm 90% sure as to the reason as to why is because the battery on my VR headset ran out again and my game closed halfway through the play session.
position. Wow, these home screens are just getting worse and worse, aren't they? But even still, that shouldn't have affected me getting the match. Everything still seemed like it had saved when I resumed the match, so I should have met the requirements. I don't know. Of course, I didn't know that I hadn't obtained the badge until after the round was over when I looked at my inventory and checked that it wasn't there. But I actually looked back on the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video, and it turns out that It's a Trap is actually one of the endless badges that you obtain immediately after getting all of the requirements. So after you use the last trap that you need, you just get the badge just like that. Yeah, that, I mean, I would have seen the badge pop up if VR did actually allow bot badge pop-ups, but, but for, for some reason they just not existent in VR. Again, no idea why. I'm blaming VR again. You saw it coming. And the VR slander is going to continue, as after I made my way out of the sewers from using the final trap that I needed to quote-unquote complete the It's a Trap badge, a good old friend that we met all the way back during classic mode returned to steal our lunch money and embarrass us in front of our crush. The input delay. Or lag, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. As it got so bad that I had to save and quit the game and Roblox so that I wouldn't die and have to reattempt 50 rounds from the very beginning. Now, what am I even talking about when it comes to input delay? Well, for some reason that I cannot even begin to explain why, at completely random points whilst I was playing in VR for most of this challenge, the game, or more specifically the headset, will attempt a drinking challenge by downing 24 beers at once, which not only causes the view on my headset to freeze for a few seconds, or in this case, it starts chugging immensely, but it also just keeps eat all of my inputs, and I'm basically a sitting duck for a few seconds. Now before you ask me to go over to Humble Mafia 1's DMs and write a lengthy bug report on this quote unquote lag, we'll just call it lag from now on, I don't actually believe that it's being caused by Sackduck, or even Roblox itself. You may remember that just a little bit ago, when we finally figured out how to push the buttons under doors in killer mode, the game randomly started lagging and the whole server eventually crashed. This is a clear example of Roblox lag, I get it in Sactic all of the time actually, especially when I'm streaming. But as you may be able to tell, I'm still able to move around and all of my inputs work fine. It kind of looks like everyone else is having issues, while I have a perfect connection. In fact, I can't think of a time where I've ever had input delay in Roblox. This is not the case with this type of lag. Like I just said, if I am lucky, and I mean very lucky, it causes the view on my VR headset to chug for a minute or two, with about a second of input delay here and there. It's still unbearable, don't get me wrong, but not too bad. However, if I'm less fortunate on that day, and the VR headset decides that I deserve nothing but pain, my entire game will freeze, none of my inputs will work at all, it'll look like I'm traveling in time at like three times speed for a bit, while my entire life flashes before my eyes, outputting all of my inputs at once. So say I want to move forward and then the game starts lagging and then I just let go of the move forward. In the game's mind, I'm still holding down. So by the end of the lag spike, I'll probably be kissing a wall or something and all of my other inputs won't work. So say if I click A to jump like 50 times over, then the game just won't register that until after the game stops lagging and then all of those jump inputs will just go through. Yeah, essentially what the lag does is it just freezes all of my inputs. It, it's not fun. And during the worst case scenarios, and I rage so incredibly hard when this happens, my game will become so slow, so laggy, so unplayable, that the only way out is taking off my VR headset, going over to my computer, and manually, yes, manually alt f 4 out of Roblox. I am not joking. And I had to deal with this for the entire playthrough. No, this is not a one and done deal. And similarly to six year olds constantly crying and whining to their parents, begging them to go home when I am just trying to watch a movie or eat at McDonald's. Even once during this challenge was over, I was never able to find a solution for it. There seems to be no cure, not even a vaccine or a way to slow it down. And believe me, again, I've said this like 20 times, but I tried everything and you're going to experience the pain alongside me. It's also kind of difficult to see from the footage when I'm lagging, since I'm recording my actual computer screen and not the screen that is on my VR headset. Most of the time, it looks like I'm having a seizure. It's not, it's just my 30,000 inputs happening all at once after the game took a giant dump on itself. So should I uh, put a seizure warning here or something? Sorry for the minor spoilers, by the way. I just really wanted to get my thoughts about this VR lag issue out of the way. Because it's really at this point in the playthrough that I started to notice its existence. See what I'm talking about? Oh my gosh, dude! 
Dude! Dislike! I'm literally clicking the button and it takes like five seconds. What am I meant to do? Yeah, it was lucky that I was on a hellhound round. Like, imagine if I started lagging when Slenderman was like right next to me or something. Yeah, I'd be sent all the way back to round one. And I don't particularly want to be touched by Papa Slendy today. I'm sorry, this whole video's just been me ranting about VR. Did you know that some people actually sleep to my videos? They've just been sleeping to someone complaining about a game that nobody would ever, ever play in VR in a million years other for, than for a challenge video. And for those of you who are sleeping, WAKE UP! The game started lagging so bad that it looked like the killers were appearing and phasing out of existence. To try and test a theory I had at the time, remember I didn't really know that this was a reoccurring issue at this point, I headed back to killer mode to see if my headset continued to chug over there. I thought maybe it was just because I was in endless survival, I mean we've had endless survival lag before on this channel many times, it could have been that. Oh. Ah, very legit gameplay. <laughs> cool. Speedrun sightings aside, switching to a different mode seemed to calm my headset down a little bit. Of course, this only worked initially until the input delay came back and I was kissing walls again, which I guess isn't the worst thing to happen to me at this point in the playthrough. I'm still waiting for a text back, Eyeless Jack. However, it doesn't really matter whether or not I die in killer mode because I'm just here to work on the exotic gameplay badge. Only 20 minutes, no more, no less. And once I had spent exactly 20 minutes and 6 wasted seconds in killer mode, great! I plan to head over to extremely boring classic mode once more to check for the mysterious entity's presence. You know, it would be really funny if we got the mysterious entity on the first attempt Wow, okay, that's, <laughs> well, you know, after all that suffering and endless survival, I'm glad I have this. What's the time right now? Uh, it is about 10 o'clock. Oh god, don't turn the console off. Mysterious entity at around 10 o'clock, so if the game crashes, which it's still lagging, it is still lagging. Yep, that's right, I've made the mistake of going back to extreme classic mode to check for the mysterious entity's presence, and actually got him to spawn. You know what, I'm not even going to commentate this next section, as this was the most aggravating 15 minutes of my entire life. No! Oh no. Small steps. We have all day, we know the time, we can always come back, it'll take us an hour. This is the hardest badge. Jesus Christ, man. Oh my god. So I need to- Christ! I- I- I don't know what to do. I- I don't. I can't even stay on the thing. I got greedy. Okay, great. No, I'm just gonna reset. Dude, come on! Why is this a spawn? Why is this a spawn? Jesus Christ! The game is lagging! It's not even me! Oh my god. <sighs> Good God! Why? Oh my God, dude! I I I give up. I I don't think I can do it. I I can't even jump on the thing. I, I can't even get the first step done. The mysterious entity better have a book with him. Well, then, see, see, the game lagged. The game lagged, and it did all of my inputs at once, and I fell off. As you can clearly tell, I was not losing my sanity trying to get this completely easy and skill-based badge, as the lag was making this challenge 5,000 times harder than it needed to be. Do you guys want to know something really funny though? You will definitely get a laugh out of this one. I just got a notification through my VR headset that it was on low battery again. And you know what that means. We have about 5 minutes until the entire console powers off entirely. Much like what happened when we obtained the Air 51 personnel badge. If we leave the game, the mysterious entity will despawn, and we will probably have to wait another 24 real-life hours until he appears again, possibly even longer. With this in mind, I climbed up the ladder for the final time, successfully managing to jump on the fence, and slowly itch my way across it as slow as humanly possible in order to not fall off for the 30,000th time. And once I made it to the bricks leading up to the hangar, well... <gasps> quick! 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 Speak to him! Did it work? I don't know if I got the badge. I think I got it. Yes! 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 Right before the console switched off again. Yes! Good God! I hate this badge. You suck. Mysterious Entity, you suck. I'm sorry. Worst spawn, and I still did it. Yes! Yeah! Clutch of the century, am I right? That badge... 
that badge was awful. Like I said, it took me 15 minutes to obtain it. 15 minutes to obtain the mysterious entity badge. Yeah, that's gotta be at the bottom of like the world record leaderboards or something. However, even with this completely skill dependent badge now in our possession, we still need to get the 50 rounds badge. So it's back to endless survival mode, my favorite mode in all of existence. Yet this time things are looking much brighter than before, as the game is not only running smoothly again after charging my headset all the way up, but after getting the mysterious entity badge, we now have a much needed confidence boost that will make these long, agonizing, and boring waves of killers much more bearable. Seeing as we don't have pirated South Park clips, Subway Surfers gameplay, as well as those quote-unquote oddly satisfying videos to fill up the rest of the screen so I don't get bored after approximately three seconds. However, this confidence boost, much like my girlfriend after I take my schizophrenia pills, will disappear immediately if the game starts lagging again, as I really do not want to have to repeat the last three hours and start the round 50 grind from the beginning. Because I don't have the quick revive perk, because I can't open a simple door, because me being in VR doesn't let me push a simple button. Whilst being bored out of my mind, I later noticed that I obtained the good old Marauder badge from killing a thousand killers around this time. To this day, I am still unsure as to why Hover Mafia 1 allows this badge to be obtained in endless survival mode. I mean, if you go over to the Marauder badge's description, it clearly says classic and killer mode only. So, like, I, I, I don't friggin' know. And they even added a badge recently, it's called Unstoppable Killers, by the way, that has the exact same requirements for the Marauder badge, except it's in Endless Survival, but you're still allowed to obtain the Marauder badge in Endless Survival. I don't know, just makes no sense to me. But whatever, I can't really complain, as it does save me quite a bit of time. Plus, I don't really want to play classic mode again, so it all works out. However, unfortunately and unluckily, round 49 happened to be a hellhound round. I would have liked to set up the requirements for the curse badge with one killer left, but I guess having fun is impossible when you're playing in VR. No worries here, however, because as long as the game isn't lagging immensely, we can handle anything. They don't call me Alpha Cat for nothing. You guys want to know what the most alpha thing a man can do? That's right, wear a skirt and thigh highs. No, I'm not kidding. If you are a man and you wear a skirt and thigh highs in public with no shame, then you've passed the ultimate alpha male test because it proves that you don't care what other people think about you. So take that! While thinking about what color skirt we're going to buy and get made fun of it, we carefully, and I mean very carefully, dispatch the last few killers left on round 50 until it's only when to go left. One of my favorite killers. And then, as if my life depended on it, with almost 300,000 points I had left to my name, I mass unboxed some super ultimate rare Yu-Gi-Oh! booster packs. Booster packs which not only have a 0.0002% chance of containing all five pieces of Exodia, but also a chance to drop the teddy bear. Three of these bad boys and we can get the curse badge. We instead get an SVD, an MG42, another SVD, a stupid deagle, a G36C, a flashback to the previous all badges in 24 hours video, an M14, Another stupid deagle, an AN94, an M4A1, another flashback of the previous all badged in 24 hours video, a monkey with a barrel of dynamite strapped to its back, the third SVD at this point, an M1014, an R870, finally, good god! Thankfully the other two unboxing sessions did not go as bad as we pulled the teddy bear quite quickly on both occasions, finally getting us the curse badge, more like a curse to get everything but the teddy bear am I right? Holy smokes. Now, now at this point, I would have liked to use the ridiculous number of points that we had obtained over 50 rounds of endless survival gameplay to go for the locksmith badge, you know, opening all of the doors in the area. But as you may or may not remember from earlier, yeah, we can't do the locksmith badge in VR. It's impossible because we can't, you know, click the buttons under the desks. So, we can't get it in this play session. So, unfortunately, I had no choice but to jump into the sewer water, ending the play session, giving us both the 50 rounds badge as well as the new Unstoppable Killers badge for killing 1,000 killers. Yeah, this badge wasn't in the game last time we attempted this challenge. I also thought that I had obtained the It's a Trap badge from, you know, killing at least one killer on each trap, but remember what I said earlier? Yeah, the game glitched and didn't give it to me for some reason. So, I had to do it all over again, making sure that I didn't log out of the session this time. No matter though, that's just a minor inconvenience for us. As now that the 50 rounds badge has been tapped off the checklist, we are over halfway through the bulk of the endless survival mode badges. And boy howdy am I just itching to get the boss rush and kill house mode. And there we go. Would have liked to have that done the first time. Now that it's a trap is now in our possession, it's time to go ahead and get a badge that haunted us earlier on in this playthrough. Locksmith. Since it's physically impossible in my experience to click the buttons found under the desks in VR, we will be asking a friend to help us during these trials trying times. So then, 
Who wants to play with me in Sactic VR? Anyone? Fine, I'll just do it myself then. I'm self-sufficient anyway, it's not like I need friends or other human beings to give me extremely clear step-by-step -step instructions to help me with every tiny mundane task or basic need. Check it out! Area 51 or Bad just makes an unexpected surprise cameo appearance in the sequel. Yeah, remember what I said earlier about me allowing myself to use an alt account to help with impossible tasks in VR? Yeah, this is what I was referring to. And after the account obtained enough points through killing a few killers, I then finally open the two doors whose locks seemed unbreakable whilst being in VR. Listen guys, I really didn't want to do this, but the game has given me no choice. I have to use an alt account if I want to get the locksmith badge. There's no alternative. This is the only way. Anyway, all was going fantastic for the first 10 or so minutes into this run, as I began unlocking all of the different locations around the base. That is, until the lag and input delay made its not so welcome return, and we get chopped up into several pieces by Buzz or Barry over here. Yep, yeah, because the game froze. The game froze on my screen. What am I meant to do? The game completely froze. I don't know what it looks like on your screen. I was literally just holding forward. What am I meant to do if the game just freezes like that? The answer to that question is nothing. There is nothing that I could have done that would have prevented that death. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. But then again, that does mean that it kind of my fault. I could have just gone somewhere else, but I, I couldn't have predicted that. There's no way that I could have predicted that the game was going to lag at that very specific point and I would have died. To prevent myself from throwing my VR controllers across my room and smashing all of my Genshin Impact figurines into tiny pieces, which are currently positioned next to my computer for some reason. Listen, they keep me motivated, okay? We instead boot up another lobby with our good friend Area 51 or Badges, put a gun to his head and threaten to kill his entire family and friends if he doesn't open the two doors that we are unable to break open ourselves. After he regrettably follows our orders, we decide that we are not going to have a repeat of last time, and we get Area 51 or Badges to leave the game so that the killers are drawn to our horrible stink instead. Yeah, that's right. That's why the killers are actually attacking us. It's because we smell awful and haven't showered in three days. I am adding this one to the next Sanctic Law video coming soon. This is definitely canon now. We also realize that while waiting for our points to stack up, hey, we still don't have the tiny destruction badge. And seeing as we got a ray gun out of the mystery box in our second pool, wow, that was lucky, we sit in the first cargo area room and pray, pray to God that one of these killers drops the fabled nuke power up. We instead get a fire sale. Yes! We get a huge discount on all mystery box rolls, even though we can only hold eight items in our hot bar and our inventory is forever locked behind the constraints of being in VR. Yes! But that's not all, we also get a double points immediately after the fire sale ends. You know what, that's it. The first person that I see outside, I'm going to kill. Actually, on second thought, I can't be mad about that. We're gonna need all the points we can for the locksmith badge after all. Think positively, Ash. Think about all of your Genshin Impact figurines that you definitely do not own because holy moly, they cost a lot. However, something that we can in fact be mad about is yet another fire sale. But you know what puts the cherry on top of this one? It came from the second to last killer's corpse. Yep. But that would have been the most free tiny destruction badge in the entire universe if that power up happened to be a nuke. But you know what? Can't complain. Just gonna bottle it all up and we're gonna go for the locksmith badge instead. You won't win, Sactic RNG. You won't win. Mark my words, I will get the tiny destruction badge. Thankfully, even under the constraints of the VR headset, the locksmith badge is still insanely easy if you do nothing all day but play this game and have memorized all 32,000 locations on the wiki by name. I mean, I did speedrun this badge four separate times and got world records, if you remember. There was only one scary point during this process while I was in the Tailstow area where Robot, the last killer that was alive who was following me around like a dog trying to find its owner, fell into the boiling water and died, triggering a hellhound round, meaning that I could not see three feet in front of me while I was going around the area to check that I had opened every single door. Little did I know at the time, since again, badge pop-ups aren't a thing in VR, I actually got it first try. Thank God. And now we only have two endless survival badges left, Tiny Destruction and Bolt Bait. We're naturally going to be worrying about the latter a little bit later on in the playthrough, as currently I can't seem to find anyone else with a VR headset, because Roblox VR is miserable, because VR our headsets are expensive because I have no friends. So instead of crying, we boot up another endless survival match with one thing in mind, the nuking of a single killer to get the tiny destruction badge. Of course, since I'm not attempting bolt bait in the session, which requires the crossbow, guess what I got out of the mystery box on the very first spin? Don't open that door and just sit in this one room. All of the killers will come funneling out of this one barricade. Hopefully, unless you step outside. 
You see, I don't need that right now. Why? 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 Thankfully, on the next epic Magic the Gathering unboxing, I got the ray gun, which holy hell is actually useful to us right now, as it'll allow us to instantly kill any killer that comes through one of these barricades as we sit in this one spot for around 30 minutes. Yep, if you want tiny destruction, this is the best method of obtaining it, at least from my experience. And you want to know what we get on the first endless survival session of this track? <gasps> That's a max ammo. God damn it. I genuinely thought that was a nuke. And that was it. That was the only drop I got throughout the entire 15 rounds. Until I inevitably had to restart because the kills were spawning far too quickly for me to control. But this next game session was somehow even worse. As you can clearly see by the footage, it looks like I'm having a seizure. Actually, you know what that means? That's right, the game is lagging again. <laughs> and this wasn't any normal set of lag spikes that I've had previously either. No, it was clear that the game did not want me getting this badge as I kept freezing in place, sometimes for seconds at a time, and it was only round one. It's still lagging! Come on! Get a grip! All I want to do is just get through this round, but I can't because the game is so laggy! Oh, is that a max ammo? Wow! I can't play the game though, because it's so laggy, I can't move. I'm gonna freaking die on round two, because I can't even move, because the game is so laggy. It's still lagging. What is making the game laggy? I want to know. Like, I don't understand. Yep, that's right. I died on round two. Well, only because I couldn't fight back or do anything, because my inputs were like 15 seconds in the past or whatever. But that should give you an idea of how bad the input delay can get sometimes. And I hate to say this, but it's only going to get worse from this point forward. Yes, it somehow gets worse than me dying on round two. This was around the point in the playthrough that I truly tried to find a solution to this lagging input delay problem. I'm sorry, but there is no way that all of these Roblox YouTubers who've played this game in VR have dealt with this same problem. Contrary to my thinking so far, it has to be an issue on my end. I tried leaving and rejoining the game again, but hey ho, I'm still at two frames per second. I even went as far as to restarting my entire computer and internet several times. And let me tell you, I have a pretty good computer and internet. However, after charging the headset back up to 100% and waiting like an hour, yeah, the lag seemed to stop for some reason, or at least it calmed down a bit. That doesn't really seem to make sense. Is the headset lagging because it's on low charge? Yeah, that just makes no sense in my 20 IQ brain. I don't know. My third uncle that my family doesn't talk about anymore because he was in prison for eight years works at Roblox, however. And he said that VR headsets are just horribly unoptimized and that the Roblox app is not responsible for the lag. Like I said, this is my first time truly using a VR headset. So if Mark Zuckerberg is watching this video, please feel free to tell me why this is happening in the comments. And also address all of the lizard person allegations while you're at it. We all know who you really are. Anyway, time to get back to the tiny destruction grind as I'm only 29 years old now instead of 18. And because living past 30 is overrated as that's when all excitement in your life typically ends, let's try and get this badge before then and before we never feel happiness again. We first get an insta-kill power up, then another mediocre fire sale, and finally a nuke. However, it dropped to the absolute worst time possible when we were being swarmed by an angry mob of killers while the game was lagging again. So we weren't able to get the badge. Come on! The one time it lagged! and I get the nuke. I'm actually so mad. The one time I get the nuke and it lags. Hooray, another insta-kill. Instead of perhaps spawning another nuke when the game wasn't lagging, however, we get a double point, yet another insta-kill, and lastly, a fire sale. We had no choice but to return to the main menu and start a new play session, as the kills were once again becoming too tanky for us to take out in a reasonable amount of time. However, apart from the lag momentarily returning for no reason whatsoever, this play session, to my shock, went far better. <gasps> I think I got it. I think I got it. Was that it? Was that actually it? Did I just get tiny destruction? Oh god, the game's lagging. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Game, game is too excited. Game is really excited. Holy lord, I'm lagging bad, sorry. Now at the time, I didn't actually know if I'd gotten the badge or not, since once again, there's no badge pop-up in VR. So after getting to a safe spot where I couldn't be seen or dare I say touched by the killers and going AFK... Yeah! Tiny destruction! Yes! 
Yeah! Finally! Good lord! Yes, yeah, sorry I had to come off of my VR headset and go on my phone to check that I had actually obtained the badge because, you know, badge pop-ups don't exist in VR and I didn't want to restart the round when, you know, maybe I didn't obtain it. I could keep grinding for it. But it's finally over! Finally over two hours of grinding to get the Tiny Destruction badge. But again, it's not about the journey. It's about the end. And brother, the end is nowhere in sight because we have yet another mode to tackle. Kill House Mode. Now, I'm sure some of you in the audience may have forgotten why I didn't already beat this game mode earlier. And while it's true that the two badges you can obtain here are some of the easiest in the entire game, specifically the Hawkeye badge, it's just basically impossible to fail this one, meaning that yes, I got it with no effort on the first try. The other badge that was available in this mode, and I can't believe that these words are coming out of my mouth, would prove to be one of the hardest challenges in this entire playthrough, Speedmaster, which requires you to complete the fabled Kill House parkour in under 45 seconds. All of those times that I made jokes about the people who would constantly complain on Hummer Mafia 1's group wall that the Kill House parkour was quote unquote too difficult, and here I am now, struggling to even get past the first section because trying to do parkour in VR is literally impossible. Although I think you noticed that after I failed both the Way Out and Mysterious Entity badges several times in a row. And if you fall off on this section once, even once, yeah, you gotta restart the whole thing all over again because there's a time limit with very little room for error. Not to mention that you turn slower than a slug in VR, so even just standing still and shooting at the targets takes actual years off of your life. And on our first few attempts, we were nowhere near beating 45 seconds. This is gonna be another long grind, isn't it? I swear to God, this entire challenge is the equivalent of wanting to restart your computer, but you accidentally click update and restart instead, so you have to wait like I'm the friggin' 63 years until you're able to use your computer again. That's how I feel during this challenge. I am really close to shaving myself bald. To make matters worse, I begun to get huge lag spikes from my headset for absolutely no reason at all. And when I fell into the pit of doom yet again, the game made itself very apparent that I was not, under any circumstances, allowed to continue with attempting to get this badge, as my whole game looked like a PowerPoint presentation slideshow for the next seven minutes. I don't get the lag. Don't understand, it's still lagging! As you can clearly tell, much like most quote-unquote alpha males after they get rejected for the 42nd time in a row and left on red by a girl, I managed to keep my calm and hold in the urge to take out my anger on all of my real-life friends who simply asked if I was okay. Life wasn't all doomy and gloomy, however, as we did manage to steal a few records here and there. 49 seconds, then 47, we are getting close. However, with every victory I claimed, it felt like a new problem reared its ugly head. This, this friggin' part is like impossible. Actually friggin' impossible. Can I please just reset the run? Can I, can, please, can I just reset the run? I, I, can, please, can I just reset the run? I don't care. I, can I please just get up? Can, can I please? Just, can I please? Just, can I please? Just get up. Can I please? Can I, can I please? Just get up and make the jump. Can I, can I please? Just get up and make the jump so I can, can I, can I please? Just, thank you. Yep, that's right, I didn't even bring up the absolute worst part of the Kill House parkour, the final jump. I mean, if you've ever speed ran this mode before, you know how aggravating the last jump can be. And I have to do it in VR, in first person, with slippery controls. This part of the parkour killed so many god tier runs because you essentially gotta make it first try. Maybe, and I mean maybe you can get away with failing it once if you're faster than the flash, but good friggin' luck trying to do the rest of the parkour section quickly in VR. But finally, after over 30 minutes of attempting the kill house parkour, I had a run that looked like it was going to give me the badge, but 44, 44, God! Dang it! No! Oh, 0.16 seconds off! <laughs> God! Why? This is actual torture. I'm actually in hell. However, this did mean that the badge was possible. Not when the game continues to lag like this, but still, it's possible. And, I kid you not, on the very next attempt, it was clear that I was on another God run. I mean, any run where I beat the first parkour segment is a win in my book. This was it. Was I going to fail the Kill House parkour for perhaps the 50th time in a row, causing my future husband, wife, or whoever's with me in the future to leave me for someone who doesn't pointlessly attempt challenges for the sake of making YouTube content? No, Ash. Remember, never look back. We're not even going that way. The past is all irrelevant. All that matters is now. Yes! Yeah! That was tough. Holy smokes. 
Thank God. Kill house mode in VR, man, it's horrible. Don't even try it. To be fair, if this video has taught me anything about VR, it's that doing any type of parkour will have you kicking and screaming at your headset in no time. Sure, it only took about 30 minutes, so we didn't waste that much time, but that should have been a one and done deal. A quickie. A $5 donation. But no, we had to work for that badge. And you know what? I'm here for it. Never again can I complain that the kill house parkour is too easy. As now I understand. I've been enlightened. I mean, it can't get much worse than that, right? Pardon me, my mistake. I think I spoke too soon because the next badge on our list is freed aliens, which you get from simply beating Area 51 storming mode, aka the most boring mode in the entire game that puts me to sleep faster than any mummy ASMR roleplay video would on YouTube. Thankfully, we only have to do this once, so it shouldn't be too bad. However, if you've played this mode before, you'll know that there is one section close to the end of the game that requires you to, oh God, it's like uttering Voldemort's name at this point, push a button under a desk. Ah! So to combat this reoccurring issue that I still have no concrete solution for, I'm going to be inviting a friend who isn't in VR to help me out. My good friend Highly Technical, or HT for short. Now to keep the challenge fair, since I really wanted to do this game mode solo but have no choice but to invite someone from a different console, Highly Technical will not be killing any soldiers or killers throughout this entire game mode. Yeah, that's right. The only reason he is here is to press one button near the end of the game if all players happen to be dead by then. But thankfully, it turns out that I have found an actual god tier server, as the players here were actually cracked to the video game for some reason. Meaning that they had game passes. Yeah, this is like a one in a million occurrence if you don't know. Game passes in Area 51 storming mode? 99% of storming lobbies all die on the surface. So it was very surprising to see us get past the giant zombie stage with a few people still left. Especially this guy, who went by the name of Burrito Man, as he single-handedly carried many of the levels all by himself. What a chad. And when it came around to the whole pressing the button under the desk thing that I couldn't do. Yeah, HT wasn't actually needed here since I didn't expect people to live this long. Oops. But you know what? We'll allow him to stay. I mean, he's basically been a bystander this whole game anyway, just watching me and, you know, the other guys take care of the other stages. Oh yeah, speaking of the stages, they've actually gone pretty smoothly so far. And now we're on the final stage, which, uh, was anything but smooth. Now, usually at this stage of the mode, you want to use either the SVD or the AWP to attack the absolute horde of soldiers from a safe distance without getting hit by them. And I do have these weapons in my inventory. And remember, I can't access my inventory in VR. So I'm basically stuck with what the game gave me in my current hotbar. The crossbow, which sucks. The M1911, which also sucks. The freeze gun, which is borderline useless in this mode. The hookshot, which is also borderline useless only in VR though, as well as the MG42, which is eh, as well as finally the ray gun, my only good weapon. But let me tell you, you don't really want to be using the ray gun on this last stage. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, it has high DPS, but it can't really hit targets from a distance. Beggars can't be choosers, however, so I had no choice but to use this piece of plastic like a starving child being fed broccoli. I'm kind of gonna have to just rely on Burrito Man here, really hope he doesn't die. He's playing things real risky, okay, it's fine. Oh god, oh god, oh, well, that sucks. No! Yep, that's right, our lord and saviour Burrito Man, who had been carrying like half of the stages for us, sadly died. Now please, may I just ask a minute of silence? Just kidding! Unlike my dad, however, he actually came back by paying a Mafia 1 a sum of 3 Robux for a revive. Listen, okay, I may be a famous Roblox YouTuber, but he doesn't know who we are. He isn't under the constraints of this challenge. He can set an entire building on fire if he wants to. I would highly recommend not going down a life of crime, but we can't control the actions of others, so I don't want to see anyone in the comments getting mad at me for not resetting the run here. Anyway, thanks to him constantly respawning again and again, even though he kept dying, we ended up beating Area 51 storming mode on the first attempt. Thank God for that. I was close to bursting into a thousand pieces if I had to do this mode more than once. Thank you, Burrito Man. Whoever you may be, thank you. Anyway, time for something completely different. And by different, I mean the same, as it's time to go back to Endless Survival to obtain the final badge that we need in that mode. And that final badge happens to be the one that haunted me in the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video. Bolt Bay, the first badge in the game where you not only need a friend to help you, regardless of the console that you're on, but you also need to shoot said friend with a Pack-a-Punch crossbow and kill six killers in a single explosion. Sadly, you can only get the Pack-a-Punch crossbow from upgrading a regular crossbow, which comes out of the mystery box. My favorite mechanic in the game, if you couldn't tell already because it's all RNG. Gambling for children, if you will. But when 
we're not only all adults, I hope. We are gamers, and instead of betting 100% of our hard-earned cash from a 9-to-5 job that we work every day on one football team, this time we're betting only 99% on one football team, while the other 1% is going towards the opposing team. That way, we're guaranteed to win money no matter what. Life lessons with Ashcat. Anyway, yeah, it's all up to luck whether or not we get the crossbow in a timely manner. This could take 10 minutes. This could take an hour. Dare I say several hours. This could, in fact, take up the entire remainder of the challenge, leaving me with no time left to attempt any of the juggernaut bat- Oh, we got it. We actually got it. On the first session. Huh. Well, maybe I'll die on my way to the pack-a-punch machine from lag and we'll have to do the whole thing all over again. No, no, we successfully pack-a-punched the crossbow too. And we actually got the badge on the very first shot of the crossbow. Didn't have to redo it or anything. Is this? Is this happiness? I don't have the urge to bite so hard down on my tongue that it physically comes off. The mystery box not screwing me over with RNG? What? No time to discover new feelings like some kid who had unrestricted internet access at 12 years old who looked up the word monster on Google and came across something that would forever ruin his innocence moving forward. However, it's time to harass some big bad bosses in boss rush mode. And by harass, I mean kill. With the first of our victims being our good friend Aberration, who we have come up with the greatest strategy imaginable in order to defeat. We simply show Aberration all of the comments that the people in the Sancta community makes about her on a day-to-day -day basis. And brother, some censoring is going to be used to, as I am not showing these on video. They don't leave too much to the imagination. This enrages Aberration as soon as she learns about this information. Rightfully so, I might add. I would be as angry as her too if I found out people online said such things about me. I'm not really sure what's up with Aberration's second phase, but my recording software decided to take a giant diarrhea dump on the frame right here. Don't worry, I wasn't lagging in game this time, shocker I know. It's just the footage that looks terrible. So before I strain your eyes, I'm just gonna skip to the part where we, unsurprisingly, beat her on our first attempt. Ah! Ah! Help! Oh god! Oh my god. Jesus Christ, that is terrifying. Oh, like, oh, like, oh, there. oh that was actually okay. scary. I forgot the cutscene doesn't play because we're in first yeah. person. Oh yeah, and speaking of cutscenes, I haven't brought up what might be the only redeeming quality about playing this game in VR. Yeah, you can play boss rush mode in first person! Groundbreaking, I know. And honestly, I wish we had the option to go in first person like this in regular Sanctum. You know, like on other consoles. I don't know if this feature existing is because of VR being buggy. What, what am I saying? Of course it's a bug. And if you thought Aberration was cool up nice and close, just wait till you see my reaction to Kraken. Uh, I hate it, scary. Oh, he's so big! He is so big! Unfortunately, however, unlike what we did to our good friend Aberration, to my current knowledge, nobody in the Sanctum community seems to like Kraken in that sort of way. So we can't instantly enrage him this time. And I mean, why would they like him as Kraken is only the second best boss in the entire game? No matter, however, as of course, we are equipped with game passes in this challenge, so I wasn't panicking at all. Yeah, that's right. If you have the energy drink, as long as you don't jump into the water in the middle, then this fight is pretty much over as soon as it starts. And because of that teeny tiny advantage that definitely did not put the game on easy mode, we beat Kraken on our first attempt. Can anything stop us at this point? The answer to that question isn't a yes, but rather a kind of, as it took us six minutes to kill Kraken in VR. What do you call this, an anti-world record? And if you don't know, and why would you, because it's never written down anywhere in the game, I'm pretty sure, you need to beat both bosses within five minutes to unlock their elite forms. And annoyingly, both of their elite forms also have badges tied to them. So yeah, we gotta defeat Kraken again. AGAIN! I am already getting flashbacks to the tiny destruction badge incident, but unlike the great tiny destruction event of 2024, at least we beat Kraken on the first try. Man, whenever I think of that badge, I just feel the urge to take out my anger on someone. I feel the urge to take out my anger on someone who is below me. And no, I'm not referring to killer mode survivor players who teabag over me because I killed them once as Wendigo. I'm talking about the elite bosses. The first of these being Sinister Aberration, who, of course, as we all know, was bathing in the sun way, way too long without sunscreen, as half of her body now resembles burned fried chicken. While we are participating in an aberration spaghetti surprise chicken mukbang, if you haven't guessed by now, then yes, I am attempting to get through all of the tedious boss rush mode badges as fast as possible so that we will have over 12 hours of playtime remaining to attempt the various juggernaut badges. Which means that's right, we're worrying about the future now. And despite what it may look like on screen with the awful frame rate again, the 
fight is going very well, actually. You see, since my last All Badges in 24 Hours video, for some reason, Homer decided to reduce Elite Aberration's health by a ton, making her a much quicker fight than the hour and a half of attempts we had to endure last time. No, I'm not kidding. You can go back and check. It really took that long. Huge! Yeah, first try! Nice. We are just absolutely popping off. I mean, we beat Aberration on the first attempt, we beat Kraken on technically the first attempt, although we had to redo it to unlock his Elite form, and we beat Elite Aberration again on the first attempt. And now we only have one boss remaining, Elite Kraken, my least favorite boss in the entire game, which I've already explained in depth as to why in several previous videos. But what do you guys think? Do you think the victory train will keep accelerating? accelerating into the sunset even in VR. The first attempt was going pretty well actually, granted I had to abuse my energy drink to the moon and back to even survive. Welcome to fighting Elite Kraken, where it's impossible to live without certain game passes. Not to mention that HT sadly passed away off screen earlier in the fight as well, so it was all up to me. Okay, that was... Oh frick no, oh, I tripped! No! No! no. Yep, that's right, our near-perfect streak came to a crashing conclusion because I accidentally grazed the water with my foot. I mean, it's just a stupid mistake, right? You know, we can always just re-attempt the fight again. It's not like that mistake, you know, stopped me from getting the badge for a whole nother hour. Right? Unfortunately, my worst fear came to be, as on the next attempt, everything was going fine until, yep, that's right, you guessed it. The ever so lovely lag and input delay, which I hadn't seen since Killhouse Mode made its warm return at what might have been the absolute worst possible time, as we get smashed. Not only making me feel very uncomfortable afterward, but sending me straight to the game over screen. Our worst fears have come true. The final boss of this challenge is not Elite Kraken himself, but rather the lag he creates in order to make the fight 10 million billion times harder for no reason. Of course this happens when we're fighting Elite Kraken of all people, of course. I can't have one single playthrough where he doesn't cause me an immeasurable amount of pain in my backside, can I? On the next attempt, we die at basically the same point in the fight because my game decided to lag yet again at the worst possible time. On the next attempt, we die at basically the same point in the fight because my game decided to lag yet again at the worst possible time. On the next attempt, we- look, I don't even know how this one happened. Watch this. No, what? No. He didn't fling me back far enough. What was that? And it was at this point in the playthrough that I realized that I couldn't just keep attempting the same strategy over and over. No, we needed to do something new, something different, which is unheard of on the Ashcat channel. Psych got you with that one. There is no other strategy. We just have to pray to God that the game doesn't lag at the worst possible time again. That's our only option. We only die another five or so times until we finally get a good run again. Getting the Kraken down to one hit left, with the only thing left to do now is to wait approximately 37 more years until we can attack him again, dealing the final blow and winning. And the game's lagging. Fantastic. I can't hit him. I could hit him. I actually couldn't hit him. The game lagged. The game friggin' lagged. Fantastic. Yep, that's right. This nightmare could have been over with if the game hadn't decided to lag and delay my inputs at the one. And I mean the one second window I needed the game to just pull it together. We do in fact need to chug an energy drink straight after this, however, but at least we're alive. So we simply wait another 37 more years for another opportunity to attack him. I love my life so much. There we go. There we go. Finally! Oh my god, the game lagged at the absolute worst possible time. Regardless of what you think about the game lagging constantly, I friggin' deserve this badge. Man, I am so glad that I chose to buy all of the game passes when I started this challenge. Imagine doing all of that again without game passes in VR with lag on top. Yeah, no thank you. I think, I think I would actually just lose my grip on reality. There would be no saving me from the mental asylum. Anyway, now that the final boss rush mode badge has been collected, there is only one mode left that we need to obtain badges from, and it's a mode that both leaves me in crippling fear and excitement. That's right, good old juggernaut mode. My second favorite mode in Sanctum. Mm-hmm, that's right, I meant what I said. I very recently changed my opinions on juggernaut mode, which may or may not have been because of this very video that you are watching currently. You see, unlike other game modes, many of juggernaut's badges rely on you being in very specific situations that nobody would bother attempting to be in if it weren't for them being badges. And similarly to rising taxes, which I continue to evade to this day, whether or not you obtain badges in juggernaut mode is entirely dependent on the other people in your server, meaning that it's out of your control 
and it's basically up to luck. And boy oh boy do we love RNG here on the Ashcat YouTube channel. So to make my life a little less hellish, here's the game plan. We knock out all of the quote unquote easy juggernaut badges first, so we don't have to worry about getting them later. These are the final blow, the real juggernaut, close call, as well as dominator. Dominator? Why don't you go dominate these nuts, am I right? Then once all of those badges are collected in a hopefully short and timely manner, we can spend the last seven or so hours that we have left attempting to get Silent Killer, which to be honest, I don't even think it's possible in VR, but okay. Dominant victory, as well as the cool new badge that got added since my previous video. The Last Hope. The Last Hope? Why don't you go Last Hope D's- Okay, that joke doesn't even work. Why do I even try and attempt comedy? This plan that I had spent around 16 seconds crafting up in my head was already shaping up to look very promising, as in the very first round that I joined, I managed to get one of the quote-unquote easy juggernaut badges nearly immediately. <laughs> Huge final blow. First round. Let's go. Instead of stopping to celebrate, however, we attempt to keep the ball rolling and go for one of the other various survivor badges before we inevitably become a juggernaut and regret our life choices. Do you know what we do instead? Walk into the sewer water by accident. Yes, that's the best strategy for this mode. Now I know I'm pretty deep into the challenge and movement really shouldn't be an issue for me anymore, but juggernaut mode, man, hands down, it is the worst mode for VR. Worse than kill house mode. Actually worse than the kill house parkour. I am not joking. Look at this. Look at a poor man as he attempts to run away from Pennywise. You see, Juggernaut is supposed to be a very fast-paced game mode. And as you have been shown throughout this video, playing in VR is not fast-paced at all. In fact, it's quite the contrary. You turn slower than an elderly person trying to cross the street. Switching between items is horrendous. Not to mention that jumping and turning are two separate buttons for no reason. Unless you physically move in real life, but that messes up all of the guns. So why do I bring all of this up now? Well, like every good young man when he reaches adulthood, we have to pick a killer to main when we become Juggernaut. And as you may or may not remember from the funny little killer mode incident that we partook in earlier, certain killer abilities are basically unusable in VR. This is mainly due to the way the X button is mapped to the controller. You guys see that right there? And you know, this usually wouldn't be an issue, but right next to the X button, oh look, you've got the friggin' joystick to move around. So essentially, to use half of the abilities in the game, like I don't know, Jack Torrance slash Aliens Tentacle Grab, you essentially gotta stop moving. Don't worry, you, you'll see what I mean if you actually play in VR, which again, I strongly discourage, do not play this game in VR, especially in Juggernaut mode. Take Alien or Jack Torrance, for example. When you're using these killers, you're usually spamming their abilities non-stop when you're moving around with them. Yeah, sorry, that's just not possible in VR. And even for the kills where you don't necessarily have to use their abilities by pushing a button, like Leatherface, for example, guess what? They are all just as unusable, as you can't go into shift lock in VR. And brother, I can tell you that playing as the Juggernaut without shift lock is going to be a nightmare on itself. Did I bring that up yet? Yes, yeah, shift lock is unavailable because it's forcefully mapped to the D-pad. And yeah, of course, there is no D-pad on the VR controllers. With all of this in mind, there was only one obvious killer out of all 24 that I would probably have a fighting chance with on VR. No, it's not Sonic, not even Freddy Krueger or Pennywise, the best killer in the game. It's Captain Zombie, quite possibly the most overrated killer in all of Juggernaut mode, as he isn't even that good if you're a pro at the game like me. But unfortunately, in this playthrough, he might just be our only option. As if you're not aware, Captain Good Old Z over here can summon two extremely powerful zombie minions that pack more of a punch than a six-year-old child after I beat them at Mario Kart using the best vehicle in the game. And as such, we'll be relying on them to get most of the kills for us. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before we are thrust headfirst into our first juggernaut round. And from the very first Pico second, I already knew this was going to be awful. Far harder than any of the challenges we had attempted thus far. This is horrible. This is so bad. Even in first person. Now, I don't think words are enough to explain the absolute torment that I was in whilst playing Juggernaut mode. And thank goodness it's the last mode of my list, because whenever I'm gonna think of, you know, playing Sactic in VR in the future, my mind is immediately going to jump to, you know, how awful Juggernaut mode was. Yeah, that's right. Everything positive that's happened in this challenge so far, it's meaningless. Doesn't matter anymore. I think the worst thing about being the Juggernaut is literally just turning. Like, 
look at this clip. The only reason I was able to kill this guy is because he happened to get luckily trapped in one of my zombie hands. Another reason why I picked Captain Zombie, by the way. And speaking of luck, yeah, God Jesus as well as the Holy Spirit must have been on my side this round, as I managed to trick the entire server into thinking that I went down to the bunker. And because of this huge misplay by them, I was able to trap the two most powerful Game Pass users in the elevator and kill them with relative ease. Listen guys, I wouldn't normally do this, I rarely ever camp in juggernaut mode even if I'm against good players, but I'm in VR. I think it's excusable this one time. And if you disagree, well it's too late, I've already recorded the video, you can't stop me. And in the end, I was able to get my first victory as the juggernaut in VR. That, that actually went pretty well. Now unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any badges in this first round, but that's perfectly okay with me. You know, at least we won as Juggernaut, we need to get that out of the way first. But yeah, Captain Zombie, at least for right now, is definitely the best killer when playing in VR. He just works. And hey, speak of the devil, somebody must have been inspired by my flawless victory from last round, as Captain Zombie is the juggernaut once again. However, unlike me, they decided to camp the radioactive area. Rookie mistake, mind you, as they've just guaranteed that I'm going to get another badge. Good old Dominator, which is obtained by pack-a-punching a weapon, dealing 200 damage with it, and winning. So I headed over to the pack-a-punch machine, got myself a handy Mustang 9 19, and begun shooting through the floor in order to damage the camping juggernaut worse. I'm really glad this method still exists, as aiming with guns in VR is a nightmare in itself. So if there's any time that I'm going to get this badge, it's going to be right now. I think the juggernaut must have been mildly upset or annoyed at my epic gamer strategy, however, as he found my IP address and charged straight to my location. However, with the power of friendship and a little bit of luck, we were able to take yet another fat W. <laughs> Nice! Huge! Dominator! That's so big! At least I think I got it. Spoiler alert! I got it. Man, we are just on a roll. Victory after victory. Badge after badge, even though we've only obtained two badges so far. Yeah, we're just doing so well in Juggernaut mode. What am I even complaining about? I sure do hope nothing comes out of the blue to, you know, ruin my chances of getting any more Juggernaut badges for the foreseeable future. Something did in fact come out of the blue and ruin my chances for getting any more Juggernaut badges in the foreseeable future. Do you guys want to guess what that something is? Any wild theories? That's right! Lag! Again! It's back! Our good old friend is back to pull on our hair for us! You see, on screen now it might look like I'm just kissing a wall, and while it's true that 99.9% .9 of Juggernaut players don't get girlfriends or even boyfriends for that matter because they're too busy sweating off in servers where the top player has less than 5,000 points and can't really do anything to stop them anyway, the difference here is that we're being forced into this ritual against our will. My inputs were completely frozen in this state, and I couldn't do anything for upwards of 15 seconds. But then, it hits us. Like a notebook being thrown across the classroom by a fellow pupil because we were caught sleeping in history again. What if this little lag thing happens while we are juggernaut? What then? Are we to just give up? Does this mean the silent killer is literally impossible? Although it's true that the lag during the Elite Kraken fight did almost make me peel off both of my lips and make a lampshade out of them, at least we could re-attempt the fight almost immediately. On average, we will become Juggernaut once, maybe if we're very lucky, twice per hour. And once a Juggernaut round is over, it's over for a while. Meaning that when we inevitably become the Juggernaut yet again, and our game decides to take a giant pee all over the frame rate and our inputs, yeah, I'm sorry, it's just over for us. But we don't have to worry about that right now. Right, guys? Yeah, I wasn't lying when I said I thought Silent Killer might actually be impossible. Listen, guys, again, behind the scenes, I did everything in my power to try and fix this lag problem. You're just gonna have to believe me. Speaking of things that we can do that make our experience slightly, and I mean slightly less hellish, I should bring up another pro strategy that even you can use in Juggernaut mode when you're trying to go for badges. And that is if you see any high-level point player join your game. Block them. Block them immediately and join a new server, as it's guaranteed that you will never see them ever again so long as they're on your naughty list. Why would I do this, you might ask? Well, you see, it's a well-known fact that I'm the best juggernaut player of all time, and because of that, I don't want to be accidentally killing any veteran pro players and making them upset to the point of where they might leave the game. Oh, no, 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 no. In this challenge, we're only going to be joining servers with players who can't run away, players who can't get help, and players who can't call the police whilst we're beating them to death. It's definitely not because we're bad at the game or because we're on a VR headset 
headset or anything like that. Nope, we're just helping the flow of natural selection. Anyway, whilst we hop between servers to try and find one where the top player has a low amount of points so that we can actually obtain the badges we need without some other player ruining the fun for us, I was unaware that I had obtained the exotic gameplay badge around this time for playing exactly 20 minutes of each game mode. Great for us! You want to know something else that's great? Becoming the Juggernaut again. And let's actually obtain a badge this time. Unfortunately, as soon as I got into the round, I quickly counted that only 11 players were in the server, meaning that we can't obtain either Silent Killer or Dominant Victory during this play session, as they both require 12 players to be alive when the game starts so that you don't cheese them or something. Thanks, Sackduck. Very cool. However, that didn't mean that we couldn't go for the other, easier Juggernaut badge by the name of Close Call, which for some odd reason doesn't require 12 players to be in the server when the game starts for you to obtain it. Yeah, no idea why, it just doesn't. There is just one tiny minuscule problem with trying to obtain this badge, and that is the fact that you have to be on less than 10% HP as the Juggernaut and win the round. So yes, it is quite a delicate procedure to get this badge. Some of you might remember from my previous All Badges in 24 Hours video that I may or may not have held one of my good friends at gunpoint to obtain this very badge by going AFK, letting them shoot me down to a fraction of my health left, and then killing them. However, you see, I can't really do that strategy anymore. Not because it doesn't work or anything, it's because the developers of Sactic finally decided whether teaming in Juggernaut mode is good or bad. Spoiler alert, it's bad. But after reading through all of the newly instated rules, which aren't actually found anywhere in Sactic, you have to go over to the Discord server to find them for some reason. Similarly to how rich oil company owners constantly evade taxes and assassinate anyone who finds out about their nefarious deeds, I found a legal loophole that can still net me the badge without me getting banned. The first order of business, however, is committing mass murder against the entire server. And as you can clearly tell by this clip, that plan is going splendid. Open the door! Open it, thank you! What is happening?! And once I had killed this really annoying AWP wielding player, I was on around half HP with only two players remaining. And maybe by now you can see where I'm going with this strategy. Yep, that's right, I'm gonna get this random bacon hair gen alpha iPad kid to shoot me down to 10% of my HP for me. Aren't I a genius? I even showed him how to get more ammo once he ran out. Man, I'm just such a nice guy, teaching the younglings how to play Sactic. I should make an entire video doing this. However, eventually when I needed him to shoot me just just a little more, for some reason he just puts down all of his weapons and instead tries to negotiate peace. Yeah, we can't be having that here. This is the real world, kid, where there is only carnage, death, and war. And to be honest, I'd rather just kill you now instead of, you know, waiting another friggin' 40 minutes to become Juggernaut again. So once we're on the brink, the pinnacle of death, we summon our two zombies and turn the last player in the server into a pile of flesh. It does feel a bit bitter, severing quite literally the only connection I've made playing Sackdog, but it was a necessary sacrifice as we did in fact obtain the close call badge first try. Thank you, TebW87. Ruining friendships is perfectly okay if it means obtaining Sackdog badges. I just hope that the Sactic police doesn't find my IP address and bans me for teaming. But we don't have time to worry about that right now as we still have four Juggernaut badges to obtain. However, the badge that was making me the most worried about my future marriage was one that didn't cause me any trouble in my previous video, the real Juggernaut. As to obtain it, all you gotta do is deal over 1000 damage to the Juggernaut in a single round, which is usually pretty easy to do even if you get terrible weapons. One small minor problem with this badge, however, is that we're in VR and trying to aim with any gun while you're moving in VR is an actual trial in itself. Even with weapons like the ray gun, which I got one time, literally once out of, I don't know, 500 rounds that I played, and I didn't even get close to dealing 1,000 damage with it. No! Oh, come on! 600 damage? Why do people have to- I cannot get 1,000 damage on this guy for the life of me, even with the ray gun. It seems to me like we've fallen back into the clutches of RNG once more. Yeah, it's it's not gonna go well. RNG is not our friend in this challenge. But it is possible, and that's what counts. I mean, just a few rounds ago, I had a very lucky streak where I not only obtained the DB shotgun immediately, God, I love the DB shotgun, but it quickly ended up escalating to a 1v1 with a rake, a very weak killer against Game Pass users. Unfortunately, however, another player wielding an M1014 just so happened to come along and stole the last 200 or so damage that I needed to obtain the badge. And to put the cherry on top, I didn't even get 
they're credited in the most dealt damage menu after the round. Well, that's just disrespectful game. And to put the cherry on top of the cherry that is already on the cake of seething rage, which is about to explode at this point, the lag came back yet again, stopping us in our tracks for obtaining what should have been one of the easiest badges in the game to get. Ah! That scared me. I can't play the game because my game is lagging. God, dude. Yeah, I'm dead now. I'm dead. I'm literally dead. I can't do anything. I'm clicking the buttons. There's nothing I could have done. There's nothing I could have done. What was I meant to do? Short lag intermission over. Time to get back to the real juggernaut attempts. Yes, I mean attempts as it got to the point where I even had to pack a bunch of the M1911 because I couldn't find a single good gun in the entire universe. Don't worry, I paid for it. Paid for it with my life. But hey, at least I stopped someone else from getting the silent killer badge. Hey, if I can't have nice things, then nobody can. And I mean that, by the way. I am going to swallow a pencil without chewing. However, it was this next round that just really pushed me over the edge. You see, I had obtained the SVD right away, which is probably the best thing that can happen to you in juggernaut mode. It's the equivalent of finding $10 million just lying on the floor. I then dashed directly over to the Wendigo area as I had a funny little tingle in the back of my neck that the juggernaut spawned there. Don't worry, I wasn't cheating, I swear, it was literally just a hunch. And hey, my Spider-Man senses proved to be accurate as the juggernaut was not only here, but it was Zombie, one of the weakest killers in the game. Oh my god, we're doing it. We're, we're actually gonna get the back. Heal, heal, god damn it! God, that was perfect. Why? I could have easily gotten the real juggernaut there. I had the perfect gun, perfect spawn location, and I just walk into him. Well, I tried to heal, but the stupid BR thing, I'm so used to clicking numbers on my computer, I had to manually go across using these two buttons, didn't work. As you can clearly tell, I didn't blame myself at all for that death. I mean, it wasn't our fault that we died. No, 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 the game just glitched. Man, I think I'd make a really good therapist. I'm able to handle, you know, tricky situations just, just so well. Listen, I promised that the real Juggernaut character development arc where we die and get mad 10,000 times in a row is almost over. We're at the climax, or at least that's what I thought when I obtained the AWB right at the start of the game. Oh, we are so back. Never mind the killer is Tails doll. Now, a question I always get asked on stream and in my comments is what my favorite killer is in Sector. And the answer to that question is that I don't really have a favorite. I like them all in their own way. That is, except for Tails Doll, as he's really difficult to hit for no reason and blankets half of your screen. Although in VR, there's this funny little setting where you can just disable all of the UI, so Tails Doll is not effective at all. Th that's pretty funny. Thought I'd mention that. Pair that with playing in VR and using a gun that, in my opinion, is the hardest to aim within the entire game, as it took me about two full mags to even land one shot on this guy. Welcome to VR. This is the normal weather forecast, if you didn't know. But even though the round just started and the juggernaut should be swarmed by any to drink ray gun spamming game pass users by now, I noticed that very few people were coming to my aid. And those that did got blasted almost immediately by Tails over here. This might actually be the world record for the longest 1v1 in juggernaut history, as neither of us were even hitting each other half of the time. But even though the game started to lag once again, I persisted. Maybe luck wasn't the answer to getting this badge after all. Maybe the only weapon we needed was patience, as I had Tails on his last leg after about three minutes of constant fighting. Yes! Yeah! Real juggernaut! Oh my gosh! Oh. And the heavens must have been looking down on me once again, as in the very next game, I got another juggernaut round. Why not go for the dominant victory badge, which requires us to win us the juggernaut with three minutes remaining on the timer? It'll certainly save us a lot of energy later if we're able to knock out this puppy right now. Unfortunately, however, whilst I was ripping apart Tailstall's limbs last round, I didn't notice that somebody with well over 70,000 points joined the game. Now, to the average juggernaut tryhard, that might not seem like a huge amount of points, and in the grand scheme of things you'd be right, but remember we're under the constraints of the VR headset, and going against any Game Pass users, no matter how friggin' good they are, even with Game Passes ourselves, remember we have Game Passes ourselves, I don't know man, it's like friggin' going up against an anime character while they have the power of friendship. It's just an impossible fight to win. As you can probably guess, it didn't take too long until I met a player who was actually cracked in the video game. To my shock, however, we do end up killing him after tanking both of his energy drinks. But as a nice little trade-off, we lose basically all of our health in the process. And because 
you only have so many options when you literally have no health left? I take the ultimate Chad Alpha Sigma male option and retreat straight to the bunker. My plan was to use the exact same strategy I used earlier to win as Juggernaut by camping the top players with the help of my zombies. But remember, the people in the server have actual fully functioning cerebral cortexes, so as you can imagine, I wasn't able to put a dent in them. To make matters worse, while trying to leave the bunker through the sewers, the game had the absolute worst lag spike I've ever had in VR up to this point. No exaggeration. My inputs were so screwed up that I literally had no choice but to take off the VR headset, go over to my computer, and press Alt F4 to get out of the game. No, I'm not kidding. And well, at least I was prepared to show my home screen this time. I mean, I was completely screwed anyway, so it wasn't that big of an L, plus we did just get a badge like friggin' last round, so again, can't be too mad, but do you see now? Do you see why I've spent, I don't know, friggin' 80% of the time trying to hop between servers to try and find one where, you know, it's just full of kids who can't really do anything against me? Do you understand now? Even with players with like 70,000 points, was it? Yeah, I I'm still screwed. I still have absolutely no chance. Fine then, we'll just have to go for a different badge. The Last Hope, which actually isn't too much of a demanding badge to obtain, as you only need to be the last player alive in a 12 player server and beat the Juggernaut to death, aka crush someone's dreams by being a sweaty little tryhard, making them punch a hole straight through their computer. And due to the events of what happened last time when we tried to go for a survivor badge that I originally thought was a simple task, I don't care anymore. I'm going to make sure that I obtain this badge first try. So I got my hands on another SPD and just waited out the entire round doing nothing to help my fellow survivors so that I guaranteed my own survival until the last second. Is it really narcissism if you literally are just better and more important than everyone else? Yeah, I don't think so. Even though I didn't see the Juggernaut once throughout the entire match, I know he was doing God's work because players started to go missing while pictures of their faces began to appear on the back of milk cartons. This was my chance. So I hopped into the teleporter and pack a punch my SPD BD as I didn't exactly know what I was up against. Listen, okay, I know some people get triggered when people pack a punch in juggernaut mode, they say it's quote unquote no skill, but what if the killer was Captain Zombie? Yeah, I'd be completely screwed with just an SVD. But you want to know who the killer actually turned out to be? Rake. But not just any Rake. The most cracked Rake player I have ever seen in my entire existence, as he managed to tank through both of my energy drinks nearly immediately before retreating. Yep, it seems my fellow survivors who exist for me, and me only, did little to no damage to this guy before our 1v1. Thanks guys, thanks for sucking at the game. God! I'm not gonna play the clip of my reaction because I screamed so loud that the mic not only cut out for a brief second, but my parents actually came into my room thinking that I injured myself. Maybe physically I'm not injured, but mentally, yeah, I don't think these wounds will ever heal. We died to rake with a pack-a-punched SVD. Yeah, you guys are never going to look at me in the same way again. Thankfully, we only had to wait another 45 minutes to get another attempt at this badge. And this time I had much more of a chance as I had obtained both the SVD and AWP rather quickly. Both absolutely insane weapons for juggernaut mode. I, again, pack-a-punched one of them just to be sure that I wouldn't die in the completely skill-based and fair 1v1 that we would inevitably have with the Juggernaut. But thankfully, the killer this round was good old Captain Zombie. And in no time at all, I dealt with him. Nice! Was, was I the last guy? Was I the last guy? I don't know if I got it. Nope, I was not the last guy. God damn it. Oh. Yep, that's another thing about this batch. The Juggernaut can completely screw over your chances of getting it if he decides to go for you instead of someone else. That's why we didn't get the badge, by the way. There was another guy alive. I don't, I don't know friggin' where, but he decided to go for me instead of, you know, the other last guy that was alive. So we didn't get the badge. Well, not only did we not get the badge, but we completely screwed over that poor Captain Zombie's round by pack-a-punching the SVD. But as we've learned, when there's a will, there's a way. And the way that usually works best is obtaining a good gun like the SVD immediately and stalling out the entire round, alone with just yourself and your own thoughts. And hey, look at that, the juggernaut on this particular round is Granny, another weak killer. Because of this, I didn't really believe that they could win, so I didn't waste points pack-a-punching my SVD this time. Let's see if it works out for me. And it took until the very last minute for the 1v1 between me and her to begin, but of course I still won no problem. Alright, is that the last hope? I think I was the last guy. Let's return to the main menu and check. Hey, the last hope! 
Yeah! I'm really sorry, Granny. I, I, I almost feel bad for that guy. He, he just wanted to have fun, and then I came in the server and just slapped him round the face. Thank God for that. And that's it. That's all of the Juggernaut Survivor badges done and dusted. We only have two achievements remaining, and funnily enough, it's actually the same last two badges that we had left during the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video. Silent Killer and Dominant Victory. And we have about 10 hours left to obtain both of them. Now, to most of you, that might seem like a long time, and in actuality it is, but you gotta remember that these are Juggernaut-specific badges, meaning that we actually gotta become the Juggernaut before even having a chance to obtain them. And let me tell ya, I have some of the absolute worst Juggernaut luck in the entire universe. And just to prove it to you, for the entire next hour of the challenge, I didn't become Juggernaut a single time! Yep, not once. So for most of the games from here on out, I just sat there doing nothing. Yep, I'm serious. But then I realized that these rounds are taking about 30,000 years each because everyone else in my server are probably kids who can't shoot straight. I mean, I can't shoot straight either. Not because I'm gay, I'm just on VR. Even with these rounds going a little bit far, faster than before, however, I still didn't become Juggernaut for a whole nother hour. I don't know what it is with Juggernaut RNG, but whenever I'm recording, streaming, or just casually playing off camera, I am never Juggernaut. Not once. I swear to god, there has to be a line of code in Sactic Juggernaut mode somewhere that has my actual IP address written down, along with a command beneath it telling the game to divide my Juggernaut percentage by 20 times to me and me only. But yes, finally, after many deaths to Jeff the Killer, I died to Jeff the Killer, oh my god. It was time to become the Juggernaut once again, and everything was going pretty well, contrary to the previous round. We did not get a huge lag spike that forced me to ult F4 out of the game this time. The great thing about Captain Zombie is that he can basically stop the survivors from doing anything at all with the zombie bomb ability. Unfortunately, however, some random guy in the server stole my strategy of pack-a-punching a weapon immediately as soon as the round started. And sweet liberty did he do a lot of damage to me. But I wasn't worried, because as long as we killed all of the players before the three minute mark, we were on pace to get the dominant victory badge. Yeah, I had to really sweat hard. Holy Jesus Christ. Yeah, baby. Dominator of dominant victory, should I say. Yeah, yeah. However, when I went to go check the badge collection menu, my worst fears came true. What? But there was more than three minutes left. Are you kidding me? I, there wasn't 12 people, was there? Are you at? Oh my freaking God. I'm. <sighs> I had to sweat so hard for that. That is so dumb. Yes, that is correct. If you don't remember, one of the requirements for obtaining both the Silent Killer and Dominant Victory badges is that you need 12 players in the server in order for you to actually obtain them. Meaning that we got to, you know, friggin' attempt the Dominant Victory badge all over again! Woohoo! No joke. I made this exact same mistake in the previous All Badges in 24 Hours video as well when attempting Dominant Victory. I mean, technically it wasn't a mistake, it was more of a miscalculation. And there's no way that I'm individually counting all of the little X's on the map when there's a silly little time limit on the badge. Thankfully, it only took me another two more hours! Yes, two more hours! to become Juggernaut again. Hey, it's not my fault that there were good players with a high amount of points who kept joining my servers, meaning that I had to instantly leave so I didn't get absolutely annihilated and sent straight to the 7th Sacto Juggernaut Circle of Hell. But honestly, maybe I should have stayed in those servers and had a chance to obtain the badge because even low point players took me around 20 million billion years to kill. Does anyone else agree that Juggernaut feels really, really, really sweaty as of recently? I don't know, maybe that's just because I'm in VR, but servers like these should usually be no problem. Who friggin' knows? Nah, you know what? I'm putting the blame on both, because I'm still the best Juggernaut player of all time, and nobody can convince me otherwise, besides the time I died to Rake with a PAP SVD, but, but that didn't happen. I, I just let Rake kill me for the video. <laughs> nobody will ever believe you. Besides the tens of thousands of people who watched this video, but it just shh. And guess what? Even though I won, again within three minutes, there weren't 12 people in the server when the round started. Just icing on the cake. I sweat off as hard as I can and get no reward. Yes, I expect to be rewarded. What, you think I make videos for free? All right. I followed the same Juggernaut strategy for, dare I say, four rounds now, and it's just not working. It's clear that I need to worry about my movement speed a lot more. Maybe Captain Zombie is just not cutting it. Maybe we need to go look for a different killer to play as for the Juggernaut. And so I headed back into killer mode to test out a few other killers that might actually not be so useless in VR after all. The first killer I had on my maybe slightly usable list was Tails Doll, who, what do you know it, can't even fly vertically in VR, so he's already out of the question. Incorrect! 
incredible. However, then I tried out Wendigo, the god of killer mode, and also pretty good in juggernaut mode too, if nobody knows how to jump. And in VR, yeah, Wendigo is surprisingly not that hard to control, as I was able to kill multiple ray gun users with little effort. Killing anyone in VR, even in killer mode with the best killer, is a feat on its own. You have no idea. Granted, I had to be in first person the whole time, and there's no shift lock, but then I made another groundbreaking discovery. Oh, you can! You can change direction! You can! No way! This is actually the new VR meta. Check this out. Watch this. Look at that! Look at that! So you can change direction in VR. Yeah, that's insane. It's very clear that Wendigo is the answer. Or we could at least try him out once or twice. We can always switch back to Captain Zombie. I mean, we have the luxury of killer choice after all. It's not like the previous All Badge in 24 Hours video when we were just, you know, picking random killers left, right, center and got like Jeff the Killer three times in a row. Yes, I still remember the Jeff the Killer curse. That... That was funny. After I'd spent just a few more rounds in kill mode and learning how to double hit people, I was ready to go back into Juggernaut and give Wendigo a spin. Yeah, sorry Captain Zombie, even in VR you're not the best. Out with the overrated and in with the killers that actually require skill to win. Yeah, skill. Uh, I have that. The Sacto Gods must have been watching me on that day because it didn't even take that long for me to become Juggernaut again and almost instantly I was able to take out an energy drink Game Pass user for basically free. That usually takes a lot of work. And and even when I was completely cornered and crowded by like 10 players, including a literal ray gun user, I wasn't even worried as I'm a Wendigo god, even in VR. However, and the big however for this round is that there was this one guy, one man, one child behind his dad's iPad in the server that knew Wendigo's one weakness. What is that one weakness? Elevation. If I can't hit them with my horns on the ground, then Wendigo is basically useless. I swear, if any of you watching this go into my juggernaut server whilst I'm any killer in the game, it doesn't even have to be when to go and you jump around the boxes because you know you can't win against me otherwise please do the world a favor and swallow toothpaste i hate people who camp here i hate it to an unhealthy degree people always ask me can you 1v1 me in juggernaut mode ash oh ash why don't you 1v1 me in juggernaut mode this is why and there you have it we failed again even with a good killer why did we even bother switching it up captain zombie wasn't the best but at least he could win the round i am going to chew on concrete now i'm gonna do all of you guys a favor and not play the raw audio reaction of me losing that round. As I said, a lot of bad words after I lost there. All words suspiciously beginning with the letter F. Yeah, that's right. I said fuck. You guys know that bug. That bug when you hit someone as Wendigo, but you can't deal any more damage to them because they're in a very awkward angle after you hit them, allowing them to instantly make a full recovery after they get back up. Well, that happened to this guy. Twice! I should have won that round, and nobody can convince me otherwise. In fact, I did win. In my mind. In my brain. And unless a bullet is lodged in there, which there currently is not, then nothing will change that fact. Unfortunately, thinking badges into existence isn't possible yet, so we only wait another entire hour and a half until we become Juggernaut again. Of course, I don't learn, so we use the exact same strategy as last time. But lo and behold, it works very well, as we're able to kill three Game Pass users wielding OP weapons with basically no effort right at the start of the round, and soon enough, we only have two people remaining. Now, here's the funny part. One of them is a Game Passer, and guess what he does? Nope, he doesn't camp the boxes like the last guy. He instead chooses to run away. God damn it, of course. Oh freaking course. And he's looping me. I love life! Yep, that's right. Like a scared little beta male, he runs all the way back to the Pack-A-Punch machine when he could have just turned around and fought me at any point like a real man. Well, you know, at least I actually killed the game passer unlike last time. And you know, I probably would have done the exact same thing either. I probably would have run away if I saw, you know, you know freaking pro Wendigo player charging towards my location. But you know what? I'm just gonna let past me rent for a little bit. Come on! I waited a whole hour to try and get this badge. And of course, one Game Pass user just dodges me once and I can't get the badge. I friggin' love Game Pass users so much, man. I, I am, I am, I am so, well, at least I still win, but god damn it. I waited a whole hour to be Juggernaut, a whole hour in the server. I, I don't, I'm, I'm actually friggin' done. I'm friggin' done, dude. I went 
waited a whole hour to be Jug, and that's what I get? Yeah, no. I've got four chances left to get Silent Kill on Dominant Victory. What was I meant to do? Huh? Get better at the game? Oh, just, just get better? What do you want me to do? Okay? I'm in friggin' VR trying to control Wendigo. There's nothing I can do. There's, there's nothing I can do. I just gotta pray that the people in my server are brain-dead idiots, but apparently the people of Juggernaut have, like, more IQ than Albert Einstein nowadays. Like, that, I think it's genuinely impossible to get Silent Killer. So what do we do now? Is this me giving up? No. I would never give up on a challenge video. We are going to get Silent Killer if it is the last thing I do. What I have given up on, however, is the current strategy. Perhaps the reason why I can't get Dominant Victory is simply because I'm not dominant enough. Maybe I need to spend 5,000 of my hard-earned doubloons and sign up for a quote-unquote alpha male bootcamp, only to be yelled at the entire time by a very large, angry, muscular, bold man. Lots of fragile masculinity jokes in this video, Ash. Listen, okay, I don't know what came over me when writing this script. And Anyway, because we aspire to be exactly like an alpha male, we're going to be doing the most alpha thing a male can do. That's right, we're going to cheese both the silent killer and dominant victory badges because we literally have no time left. And I'm not even sure how else we're going to get these badges at this point. We are simply out of options. How are we going to be doing this, you might ask? Well, at first you might be thinking that, you know, I could just hop into a private server with 12 of my friends, have them all reset so I can get the silent killer and dominant victory badges just like that. But from what I've heard, the sack of the have actually made that strategy a war crime. AKA, they've made it so that you can't get Silent Killer, you know, in private servers. Yeah, you just can't obtain it. It's locked. You can only get it in public servers. So we will have to do this in a public server. An empty public server. Luckily, there is a very easy method to guaranteeing that you'll join a lobby with no people. All you have to do is like and subscribe. I'm sorry, I will never do that again. I would like to be done with this challenge, please. To guarantee that you'll join an empty public server, however, as it's rather difficult to find one on your own, all you have to do is continually block people until the game decides that you need some alone time to think about what you've done. All those innocent poor souls that I blocked, they didn't do anything wrong, we just need a badge. Once this very easy and simple task was finished, I simply pinged everyone on my Discord server, which you should totally join by the way, and we filled up the juggernaut lobby nearly immediately. This leads us into the second part of my master plan. We simply ask the juggernaut very kindly every single round to reset themselves as to not waste the limited time we have left. And we keep doing Doing this and rolling the dice until the game wises up and remembers that we need to become the juggernaut once every blue moon. There are only two issues with this otherwise completely foolproof and easy method. One, it's a public server, so if a pro player happens to join, sweats off and deals more damage than we can heal, we'll have to join another server and start all over again. And two, like I just hinted at due to Sanctic RNG being dumb, we will have to wait around 29 years to actually become the juggernaut. Which even though we now have basically a 90% chance of obtaining the badges we need due to our completely skill-based strategy, it still took forever. A quick example to all of the people out there who think bad juggernaut RNG doesn't exist and I'm just making it all up, my friend Bio got to play as the juggernaut not once, not twice, but three times before I got a share of the pie. He's had it twice as well! Am I just blacklisted from being jugged? Oh, but you just have to get lucky. No, shut up! I'm telling you, there's a line of code somewhere in the game that is out to get me. I only wait 73 years to become juggernaut, but once I finally do, it's time to put my master plan into motion. Now, like I said, I'm doing this in a public server. I mean, I have no choice. I have to do it in a public server. Can't do it in a private server because you can't even get Silent Killer on a private server. But just as a word of warning, do not try this at home, okay? Unless you're 100% certain that everyone in your small public server is in a VC or is either an alt account, otherwise you will probably get banned for teaming. I'm pretty sure this falls under the guidelines for teaming. Just, just a word of warning, okay? I wasn't sure how many randoms we had in the server as we filled up the lobby to basically maximum capacity instantly, so I just asked everyone to go to the Pack-a-Punch machine area or reset. Die or I'll kill you, basically is what I said. Unfortunately, there was someone with over 5 million points in the server who I'm pretty sure was a random. I mean, why else would he use a landmine here? But since I'm Wendigo, the second best killer in the game, only behind Pennywise, I was still able to kill him with relative ease. Crisis averted. But I did need some health back, don't worry, the Ashcat gang is here to donate to the cause. However, that wasn't the only guy who was apparently just a random passing by. Yeah, you see this guy, Kenstro? Yeah, him. We gotta kill him too, is he isn't listening to me and jumping off of a bridge like a good little survivor. It only takes us an entire minute to do so, meaning that we can't get the dominant victory badge this round. We're really dragging this video out, aren't we? But we do kill him. But nevertheless, we can still get Silent Killer. So I kindly asked everyone else in the server to reset and die, and we did it. We got 
are Silent Killer in VR through 100% skill and not abusing game mechanics at all. And no, I'm not going to play the clip of my reaction as it is quite mundane. Yay. Just so all of you guys know, I had this strategy planned out from the very beginning. What, did you think I was going to obtain the Silent Killer badge normally? What, with friggin' clunky moving physics? With, you know, friggin' lag spikes that happen every 10 minutes? On a VR headset, the, the hardest badge in the entire game? Yeah, no, no, no. If you said yes, then I think you'd be better off watching a player who is actually good at Juggernaut mode. Do I have to remind you again that I died to Rake with a pack-a-punched SBD? If you want to see someone get the Silent Killer badge in VR legitimately, then do it yourself. No alt accounts. No friends helping you. No, 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 go on, do it. I'll wait. Anyway, enough. Enough ranting about badges that I totally got fair and square, it's time to collect dominant victory in the most dominant way possible, killing AFK players who pose no threat to us in the slightest. And you know, while I do this, I might as well just vent out all of my feelings about BR since this video is almost over. Well, if it wasn't for me not being able to access my inventory, gun movement being messed up, not being able to press buttons under desks, aiming with weapons being near impossible, half of the kills being borderline unusable, as well as shift lock being unavailable entirely, then I think Sactic in BR has a chance. Yeah, that's a lot of problems, but maybe the god himself of a Mafia 1 is watching right now and can fix at least half of those things. That would be nice, even though I doubt more than four people would ever go out of their way to play Survive and Kill the Killers in Air 51 in VR, but okay. You may notice that I didn't add our main antagonist, The Lag, into that list of problems, and that's mainly because, yeah, I don't think that's Sactic's fault. Uh, even after the video's over, yeah, still could not find the reason as to why the game was lagging like that. It's just one of life's unsolved mysteries. Up there with the Roswell incident and D.B. Cooper for sure. And in the end, with a bit of cheesing and a semi-anticlimactic round, we did it. Yes! We did it! Had to cheese the last two badges. Hey, another silent killer round, I'll take it. Yeah! Whoa! All badges in VR, baby! Let's go! And there we go. That's all Sactic badges collected in VR in under 24 hours, with the actual finishing time being 21 hours and 17 minutes, which unfortunately doesn't beat our previous record, but I doubt that'll ever be beaten again anyway with the whole new infection mode being announced with new badges probably being added alongside it. Yeah, that's how long I've been working on this video for. I started production in July and I'm releasing it in September. I hope. I hope it's September, yeah. I think if I had to take anything away from playing Zactic on a VR headset is that we should never, ever do this ever again. No, I am serious. This is a one and done deal. I am never touching this headset ever again. I think the worst point had to have been juggernaut mode where I could not go two seconds without being blasted by every single other player in the server. Even players who did not have game passes were doing better than me, okay? But you know, the other modes, they weren't too bad aside from the lag, which again, I could not find a solution for. But you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave that there. We're just gonna leave, leave the VR headset there. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get therapy. A lot of therapy. And I might shave my head as well, I, I might do that. So, I'll see you guys next time.